Are you guys can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, well, I'm going to let it rip then. All right, buddy, are we going to do this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Busting with the Boys. You can tell that we are in Zoom. We're feeling a little can tropical, more like a little... De- we can hear you, Will. Guys. More yes. like a little desert vibe. A little Zoom piece for the boys, but we are in Arizona. Cabo is on the horizon. Big week just happened with Busting with the Boys, but now we are going to get right into it. The football season's officially over, boys, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop rooting for our favorite team. That team is Chevy and its franchise player, the Silverado, a truck with unstoppable grit and determination. According to J.D. Power, Chevy trucks earn more new vehicle quality awards than any other brand. That is some serious hardware. Head over to Chevy.com to learn more. Silverado is strong and dependable as the people who drive them. For J.D. Power 2022 U.S. award information, please visit JDPower.com slash awards. It's been a big week, Willie. Do you want to give me it's a been quick been a massive spark? week. It's been a massive week. I think we hit uh, out here. Barstool, by the way, Barstool put on a hell of a show all week long with the Barstool Content House, the live shows, the mini golf, the high production. They absolutely crushed it. I think we did. We were talking about it the other day. We did right above. We did about 20 or 21 pieces of content, including interviews, shows, everything we got on. We were out here grinding, bro. Some absolute bangers for sure, dude. I mean, I don't know if we can get too much into it, but if you guys like the uh, the 49ers, Fred Warner is going to come on this podcast. Christian McCaffrey is coming on this podcast. If you guys like comedians, Burt Kreischer, Shane Gillis. You like golfers, Max Homa. You like cosmetics? Well, we got an episode for you guys today with Mr. Jeffrey Starr. So there is, you, <laughs> you boys like, are checking like, a lot of boxes. You like gays? Perfect. Jeffrey Starr is coming up shortly. <laughs> and here it is. Is it's beautiful. You did not make the episode. Are you, um, I was that a, was that a, um, a political stance not making the episode or were you up to something? No, there's some values that I have that I like to stand firm on and now I'm just fucking around. So I missed the Jeffrey star. So for everybody out there listening, obviously I've been playing a nice little, nice little angle out there on the internet that like I drew a line in the sand with the Jeffrey star thing. Your boy, we're, we're about to be in Cabo in like what? 48 hours, Taylor. I was yeah. having a debacle with my passport. Thought I would have had it by now, like a week ago or a week and a half ago. Um, Cause I was about to have Mitch. I was about to have Mitch drive down and like pick this thing up. But the, there was a debacle at the Atlanta passport agency. We're traveling out here and I had to get an appointment in Tucson, Arizona. And the only appointment available was Friday at nine in the morning. So I had to drive two hours down on Friday morning to Tucson to make my appointment at nine. I have, you have to wait basically three hours to pick up your passport. Well, they took four and a half. So by the time I was on the road to come back, it was like, what was it? One and 30, two o'clock. And I had to drive straight to the Burt Kreischer. Uh, something's burning, which by the way, that's fucking awesome. We got to do that. Um, yeah, I, had to drive so straight cool. to, I had to drive straight to that show. I mean, at the end of the day, I was just driving and like enjoying some alone time, which was kind of nice, but I missed, the Jeffree Star episode, which I was bummed to do that because obviously all the fun we've been having the last couple of weeks. And I missed the Fred Warner episode, which I'm so bummed because he's he's the best linebacker in the league. Uh, so I was bummed about missing those. So no, it wasn't uh, <laughs> for, everybody, for everybody questioning. It was not a political stance on, on uh, um, what am I trying to say here? Avoid Jeffree Star. But I, I did have some FOMO. You know, you were hitting all the you were hitting all the content. It was blown up. TMZ. You can talk about that. We went to we went to a, a party later that night. Drake's party, not the flex, but also the flex. And TMZ cameras were all over us. That story with Jeffrey Star. This whole thing the past couple weeks with Jeffrey Star has been nothing short of a ten out of ten content run for the boys. Especially, obviously, you you're the main character in this whole thing. Yeah, dude, I feel like the the Drake thing was insane. First off, we've already talked about how much we hated it because just standing outside, I'll use your analogy, like it's like the zombie apocalypse and we're all just trying to get the vaccine and the only safe place is inside Drake's concert. And it's like, hey, I'm on the list, I'm on the list. It's like, just makes you feel grimy. And I'm going to tell this story because I want it out there because I feel I always have that weird thing in me where I have to get in front of it. There was a moment when we were going from gate to gate and Will says to me, Taylor, George is getting people in, George Kittle. So uh, we like jog over there and we get it and George is letting people in. You go, yep, yep, here's good. And he's like, the last one's this person right here. He cut off the last person before me and I go, hey, <laughs> I go, hey, George. And he looks back at me and he just kind of goes, Taylor, it's not personal, man. I'm so sorry. And kind of just walks into the distance. 
And I was like, probably the worst <laughs> feeling I've ever had with another player in the NFL, another player that I know. And I'm actually friends with that was, that was a tough L for me to take. And I never want to feel that pain again. Then three minutes later, I'm just sitting with the boys hanging out. Cameras are in my face, fucking going crazy, like flashing, blah, blah, blah. I'm disoriented. I am definitely, I did not, I hope that video comes out. Cause I have, I have no idea how I look or like, I was like, so all over the place. And they're like, Taylor, are you dating Jeffree Star? Is Jeffree Star a good kisser? And I'm thinking, Hey, what the fuck is going on right now, bro? This is all, this is, this has become bigger than all of us all over me tweeting. Am I in Wyoming? And now people are like, fucking, I, I mean, there's some, there's some people that are thinking your boy's an ally to the community. And then there's some proud boys out there that are like, you're a fucking disgrace. <laughs> you're a fucking disgrace to everything that's happening. And my whole thing is like, brother, we just did a podcast and reshot a little video, but I don't want to give too much of that away because it is an excellent, it is an excellent interview. Jeffrey star is a extremely unique character. We all know that. And it was a very, it's a very interesting interview because navigating it was difficult. I said to him on multiple occasions and told the boys after like the boy talks in, in riddles. Like he doesn't really finish sentences. He doesn't really like get, give you too much detail about stuff sometimes. So not knowing this individual and just trying to learn about them. And like, I'd be, I'd be lying if I wasn't sitting here going, is, is this like a they them situation? Is this like a, what, like a, how do pronouns work? And this is just a whole different world that I'm so new to that. I was trying to like be, you know, respectful about, I guess. And then he was incredible though. Like after we nervous, I mean, Oh yeah. Yeah. I, that was probably the most nervous I've been for a podcast besides like probably when we first started doing them, we we're just kind of like trying to figure out this whole busting with the boys thing is going to work. But it was definitely one of those deals where I'm like, I like, I, you don't want, like he's doing us a solid by coming on the pod with all this stuff surrounding him and the NFL players and people thinking it's me or somebody else or who is it. And he literally was like, yeah, I'll fly in. I'll fly in for the game and uh, I'll come on your show. And like was at no point was difficult. It wasn't like, Oh, we can do this time. And they say yes. And they move it a bunch. They ask for like, he asked for a bunch of things. It was just like a solid, smooth deal that ended up blowing the fuck up. Uh, and so I think people are in for an absolute treat. It's going to be, this is a, this is a fun pod. And I think it's going to be funny to watch me try to navigate <laughs> what the hell I'm doing. Because I, I really didn't know what the fuck I was doing the whole time. Yeah. And you, and you were solo dolo. I know that was more nerve wracking, but honestly, I was a little more nerve. I was a little more nervous for the Fred Warner one because Fred's a linebacker, you're a linebacker. And I was kind of excited to be like a fly on the wall in that conversation. Like watch you boys talk ball and like chime in yeah. when I could with the Jeffrey star thing, you and I were both, we would have both been in the same situation. The only positive would have been like, maybe you thought of some things I'd been of, but I mean, I, knew, I was like, just, was, all I was, my, my whole game plan was going to try to get you guys to kiss for a clip, like try to get you like a peck on the lips. Like, Hey, can we get it for content? You're going to be like, no, like, why would I do that? And I was just, in my head, I was going to be like, dude, dude, for content. Like, like just for like a little video, just to like tease and like really lean into this. And then in my head, you'd be like, uh, why don't you do it? If it's just for content. You just want like a little clip. And then I would respond with my zinger, like, because I'm not gay, we would all share a laugh, but you know, that was literally my only plan of action because I got to, I was sitting back watching the world go into chaos with this whole Jeffrey star thing. And you get to have fun and lean into it. And Jeffrey, Jeffrey was a boy uh, playing into it with us, like messaging back and forth. I'm like, when do you guys get back from Wyoming? Whenever you, you know, when can I get on the pod and do all this stuff? So that was probably the only part I was like bummed about, but to go back on the TMZ thing, JP, were you guys still there? Yeah, we were still there. When the t all the cameras came up. Yeah. Yo, how nuts was that? Bro. Bro, it was literally like, it was truly like a paparazzi moment. It's like, we're standing there in the dark and then all of a sudden, lights come on and the first question like as the lights shined all over taylor was are you dating jeffree star and you hear just people chirping in the back are you dating jeffree star have you guys kissed blah 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 and it's like holy shit this is like one of those celebrity type moments where they're trying to like find some dirt just like put out there for the world dude and taylor uh, taylor crushed it how when everybody ran up on him they, like what's going on what's going on guys check out two days you can find the full thing on busting with the boys yeah well i, I just said a video, said that I, I, I legit said a video was like did i even chat. say it right you did i sent a video that we can hopefully put in the youtube so the fans can see exactly how you reacted 
You know, I was, I, I, all I remember is being disoriented and being like, don't say, <laughs> <laughs> like, don't say no. Cause then it ruins everything. <laughs> like I, like, it's all like, Hey, come, come watch the pod and figure it out. And it's Yo, like, but that, it was even higher because remember I got a text from, I won't say his name, but from a player who's been on the show and texting me one-on-one be like, Hey, Will, for real, like on the low, is this stuff like true? And so I'm like showing Taylor and Taylor's like, golly. And uh, so then you got the paparazzi moment that happens after and it's just like this whirlwind of like, have I, have I taken this thing way too far? Dude, there was that fear for sure. I was like, holy shit. Like I'm officially like, is he gay? Is he not? And it's like, it's funny. <laughs> you know, it's funny when you're in the locker room and you do some shit. Oh. And guys are like, hey, yo, 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 chill, chill, chill. But like now it's like, oh, people legit think I'm gay. And it's like, well, you, I, had you my, the I had teammates. Joey Camasta too. I know, but Joey, like that, I mean, everyone could see that was like a fun little deal. Then like the whole thing of me turning around in the bathroom was like, people were like, he was the fucking guy. He is, and it's like, <laughs> I go, you rattle off a bunch of reasons why I wasn't. But listen, like you guys are going to see the episode. Like <laughs> it was, it was, it was just a wild situation because I had teammates, teammates hit me up being like, Hey, people are like, people are texting me. Like you are trolling the world right now. People are texting me, asking me if it's true. Like if you are, if you're gay or not, we go into, oh. uh, we finally get in the Drake, the Drake thing. One of the first people we see was Derek, Derek Henry. And Derek's like laughing. And honestly, when this whole thing went down and it started blowing up, cause we went to something's burning with Bert. And like, as I'm getting mic'd up, Jack like runs up with his phone. He's like half a million views already on his TikTok. I was like, oh no. <laughs> like I legit was like, yeah, oh, I fucked this up a little bit. And one of the first people I thought was Derek. I was like, Derek's not going to know the joke. He's not going to understand the joke. And he's legit going to think I'm like this. And it's over. Derek sees us. We're like grabbing a drink when we first get in, comes up, sees the boys. And he's like, listen. I like, he's like, dudes, I got like 50 people text me. AJ Brown text me, asked me if it was true. This person text me, asked me if it was true. And Derek, Derek was like, no, he's trolling everybody. He literally said, no, Taylor's just, he's, it's a joke. He's trolling you guys. And for me, I'm like, okay, good. Derek, Derek, if Derek can figure out the joke, then we're going to be all right. Yeah. If he can understand then it's all good, dude. And Chris Long, he came up to you, he's like, yo, that's the funniest thing in the world. But she, yeah, Chris, you know, Chris another, Long just like, another like genius. respect. It's like all of your, uh, uh, what is it? Like colleagues, I guess, people that you're in the same world with when they're coming up, they're like, hey, it's fucking well played. That's where it's like, okay, thank God. Yeah, people get it. But like, I'd be lying if we're not, I mean, we would all be lying to ourselves if we sat here right now and thought the whole world knows that that was a joke. <laughs> like there are yeah. truly NFL players out there right now that are like, yeah, Taylor Lewan's gay. <laughs> Bang, good for him for you know coming out yeah i guess i mean i don't play that shit but like yeah good for him bro yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. For all the uh for, for all the uh you know proud boy type guys are like oh i'm done with the podcast what a disgrace like this is this is good this is a good line in the sand it's like all right that's good for us too because that's not that's not the type of crowd we need to be rolling with here i uh, know but on the other on the other end of it uh will i feel like i've I've come off a little too liberal. I need to start making, I need to start doing some, some Republican shit. I need, I need to go on the other side now. Cause I feel like I'm coming off a little too much left. I need to go hard, right. For a little bit hard. Like, I don't know. Some proud boy type stuff. Getting you mad. Can, you can go you, to, you, think there's, uh, you can go to Jeffrey's ranch and shoot guns with him. And he did. Um, I think I was Jack. Was it you that said, Jeffrey was like, hey, come out to the ranch. We can do a vlog and stuff out there. He was legit like asking us to. Yeah, he invited us to Wyoming, said we could make a weekend out of it, do a bunch of content, vlogs, shoot guns, hunt, uh, the whole nine yards. So maybe what we a will wild be in deal. Wyoming. Yeah. Maybe we will be. I feel like, yeah. hey, hey, this is one of those things, though, like we got to go as a group. Because if I, if uh, I let's say that's you, <laughs> not me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut the fuck up will <laughs> uh, no dude no oh uh, uh, yeah but yeah it hey, was but, it was a wild deal bro it was a it's been a fantastic week and i'm bummed the boys are back in nashville right now because i like it truly was so much work like obviously our work is so much fun but when the time was to play it was like so so short-lived with all the boys Hey, and hey, shout out the boys too. Like you guys absolutely fucking body bagged it out there. Staying body, bro. Absolutely everything. 
ch- switching from content house to Airbnb. Hey, we're going to go do the interview here. Hey, let's go to Radio Row. Let's do this. Let's do that. You guys, you guys crushed it. So, um, yeah, man, about some of the boys was out here. I think we were in the headlines. Headlines too, like all week long. Like Dave was obviously spouting at the mouth about the fucking dinner all week. Um, yeah, do you want to talk about that? Like how you how you feel? Because I feel like <laughs> I, I can give my opinion, but I'd love to hear your side of the story. I'll let the people hear your side of the story from just Will Compton. Well, so we went to this this dinner, this bar stool dinner. It was a uh, what was that? What day was that? Was it Thursday? That was that was Tuesday uh, or Wednesday because Tuesday. it was the night of the ski show. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So we went out to this uh, to this dinner at this nice steakhouse, Dominic Steakhouse. Shout out them, man! A phenomenal Australian wagyu ribeye that I got off menu that I ran up the bill a little bit on as well. That thankfully uh, Dave and them gracious enough paid for. Uh, but we went to this dinner and we had this room. There's about twenty of us there. And I said, I, we, I was like, by the time I got there, I was like on the other end of Dave. So not a whole lot of getting a banter with the boy Dave because we played. Oh yeah, because it was the mini golf day. Because we were bantering about mini golf, and his mom, him, and his mom just beating Taylor and I's asses all day long on the course. And uh, do we do this dinner, man? And it's the dinner started at like eight thirty, and we leave at around like eleven thirty. The check comes. Let's just say the check came at eleven thirty-five. I left at eleven thirty. So we get done eating our meal. Like they already had, had apps there when we had uh, arrived. And we're basically done with our meal probably around 10 o'clock, I'd say, I'd guess. Um, and we're there hanging out. I had Kirk Minihan next to me. Uh, Caleb, Caleb was there. Hank was there. I was sitting with like uh, 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 Jersey Jerry, KB. And we're all kind of down on our end, just like having a good time. Well, it gets to be like three hours now. It's like 11, 11, 20, 11, 15. And I'm like, hey, like, what's the move? What are we doing? Are we, are we trying to go out? Because fights... Yeah, there's like Burt Kreischer, Shane Gillis, Fights, KFC, a lot of the Barstool boys. They're at this bar called Patty's down in Old Town. And they went out there after Burt and Shane's show. And so I'm hitting them. I'm like, hey, where are you guys at? They're like, oh, Patty's come on out. And I'm just thinking like, what's the move? Hey, are you guys going to go out tonight? Are you guys stepping out? Blah, blah, blah. A lot of them were like, no. Caleb was like, let's roll out. Hank was like, I'll go with you. I was like, I'll get this Uber. Like, are we good to roll? Like, are we kind of just sitting around waiting for somebody to make a move? Because by that point, we had about three or four rounds of lavender towels come out to like, you know, those hot lavender towels where you like clean your hands and face and everything else. Three or four rounds. I shit you not that it came out. So we're kind of sitting there and I'm thinking like, I mean, it seems like everything's done. And, uh, hindsight, I should have just re- looked down about, Hey Dave, like is the checkout or something like that? Because he was blown up about this fucking check debacle. And, um, but I didn't do that. I got an Uber. I was like, Hey, the Uber's going to be here in a few minutes. Like, let's get ready and go out there and meet him. So we got up, I walked down the table and I go over to Dave and I was like, Hey Dave, I really appreciate the dinner, man. Um, and, and just FYI, I got this steak off menu. He shook my hand back and, uh, he's like, Oh yeah, no problem. And then we bantered a little bit about mini golf, about how his mom, like he was talking about his mom. He's like, Hey, my mom did not like you at first. I'm like, dude, I know I was kind of figuring that out, but I feel like she came around there toward the end because I was messing with her and busting her balls throughout the entire little mini golf tournament. And then Dave and I bantered back and forth about how he got in my head, called me like, oh, Willie, you can do it. I just, I go, Dave, when you said I just got to talk to him like a five-year-old, that's how you got, that's how you got to treat him. I was like, that's when you started to get in my head. We're kind of like laughing. And I'm like pointing as I'm like leaving the room. Apparently I leave the room, our little group leaves the room and he just starts going in. Is that not the most wildly disrespectful thing you've ever heard about in your life? And I hear it all and I'm thinking, yo, Dave, if you were that pissed off, why didn't you say something like when I shook your hand and thanked you for dinner and was like up and leaving? Like, hey, Will, like, what are you doing? Like, the check hasn't even came yet. Like, I get I left before the check. But again, this is a three hour fucking dinner and it's a massive table to where I'm on the other end. We're not everybody's not in the same little group. There's like little groups throughout the whole table. And so I leave. And Caleb and Hank are starting to feel bad about it. Their anxiety is rising. I'm like, guys, I got the Uber. Like, just put it on me. Like, I got you guys to come. You guys are sharing a ride. Just blame me. So they, of course, did not hesitate blaming the fuck out of me. Um, Let me see here. Somebody's fucking trying to. All right. Sorry. Somebody's trying to call me. Um, And they, so they didn't hesitate. They blame me. And then I get there the next day and the whole content house is kind of blown up about the whole thing. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? And I'm like, is he really like upset about it? So Dave gets done doing the KFC radio with them. 
And I like, you know, do the whole thing like, hey, will you want to face some music on the yak? And I'm like, fuck, I guess. I didn't know this was this big of a thing. Do the whole thing. And I kind of see everybody's facial reaction. I'm sitting next to Kirk Minihan, and Kirk's like, yeah, you probably should have waited. And Kirk's saying that. I barely know Kirk. Awesome dude. I'm thinking I see his facial, uh, I see his response. I'm thinking, okay, maybe, maybe I should go apologize to Dave. So that's when I start becoming aware. I'm like, man, I guess I should have fucking waited a few more minutes for this thing to come out. So I go over to Dave, pull him aside. Of course, there's a camera, but I was trying to go to him without a camera. Just genuinely apologize. Hey, brother, that was a fucking dickheaded move last night. And I was an asshole for that. I had zero awareness on the situation. And that's on me. And then he, he continues to lean into it a little bit. But I, you know, try to do my best to give him a real apology. And then these boys just run wild with the motherfucker continually about continuously about like these dumb fucking animal football players they are so stupid classes move F, blah 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 then i start to figure out he's doing a little bit more content on it so i see him later that night i'm like yo are you still bitching like a fucking old lady about this thing like just being a child about it but anyways that was the whole thing on the whole dinner uh debacle the whole dinner headline that lasted like ran its course for like a good 24 hours felt like 36 but that actually you feel like i explained that well no, I thought you did a good job explaining that. You did. It's just... Uh, What's your opinion? What do you think? I mean, obviously, you always want to wait for the bill to, like, get there, especially if you're not paying as, like, a, as a courtesy. However, like, what you have going for you is three hours. It's a three-hour dinner. It's a big table. Like, if it was you... Uh, Charo, him and his girlfriend. Then it's like, <laughs> yeah, you can't. Just yeah, leave. So that, yeah, like if there's like eight there's, or ten under, yeah, and, like we're all kind of sitting there looking at even, each other. Yeah, you're not sitting with him, brother. Like you gotta. I think. Let's say you did fuck up. Let's say you were wrong. Yeah, let's you just play that. Apologize. Let's just play the game. You, hey, Will, you were wrong. You shouldn't have left. You went exactly. and apologized. Hand man. up. Hand up. Lead from the front, right? Yeah. It's one of those deals. Like, if they want to keep playing it up from like a content standpoint, go ahead and do it. But I wish, um, I wish they would have been like, "Hey, man, don't. It's all good." He's talking about a ten-year ban on the boys. I'm thinking, what are you fucking talking about, Dave? Over I know. over a couple minutes late. Like, I, and then I'm like, "Yo, Dave, like being a coward about it too." I looked at you, genuinely shook your hand, and said, "Thank you for dinner." And if you felt some type of way, then why not just address it right there? Why not it just seems like, like, you're you're really going to leave before the bill comes? I would have literally been like, oh, shit, yeah, you're right. And I would have probably sat down and done some little funny thing about, hey, that's my little fuck up. But we just sat there and joked, and then he talked shit when I leave the room. Like, what a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, yeah, and it, it was, uh, and the thing, too, is he does have himself a little group of yes men around him that were like, yeah, Dave, yes. yeah, fuck him. Fuck him, Dave. I like Dave. We all like Dave. Dave's a great guy. He does like to blow that shit up, and I feel like, if Dave really sat there and thought about it for, for real, he'd be like, well, damn, he did just apologize. And at the end of the day, if it's like, I apologize, it's all good. Like you got to give the boy another shot at dinner. You know, yeah, I mean, he's, he's clearly playing content game now. Like he, like, he's just, he, you know how he does his face. Like he like says something a little wild and kind of just like, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but then just kind of looks like he knows he just dropped a little bomb and everybody's just kind of reacting around him. And, and shout out to him. He's great. I mean, obviously he's been doing, he's been in the content game for so long. He does a phenomenal job with it, but it was one of those deals that kind of sat back when I was in the content house, like, Oh, people, people are telling us one thing. And then when he's around saying a whole different thing, I'm thinking yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot of yes men in this building, which is great. Like you need a handful of those guys, but you also need some people that lets you see devil's advocate once in a while. You need that. I'm not yeah. saying we're those people, but even <laughs> when, Ryan Whitney is a perfect example. Like we were talking last night after the Super Bowl. Wit, it goes off on you on radio, on radio row or whatever. He talks about football row. players. He's like, they're yeah. so dumb. They don't yeah. even, he doesn't kills, get it. Kills us. Like not only you are catching bullets, the rest of the whole community is catching <laughs> straight bullets. You tell him three hour dinner and what'd he do? You tell them, you tell everybody what Wit did the minute you said, yeah, it was I three, said three hour dinner. I said, Hey, Wit, I saw you on Barcelona. You guys are tripping pretty good for not being there. And he's like, and he's like, Oh, are you guys not the dumbest animals on the planet? Like in sports. And then I kind of agreed with him. Like, yeah, football players are, we're all, we are pretty dumb. But I was like, I was like, Wit, I was like, that was a three hour dinner. And I sh like, He's like, but did you even thank him or anything? I go, wait, I, I went over and I shook his hand. He goes, oh, he didn't say that. And then literally marched right over to Dave and then started chirping Dave and kind of being on the side of, being on our side about it. But that's a man move like, right there. That's a man move by Wit. Wit realizes what he did. And he went over there and was like, well, what the fuck, man? He fucking did X, Y, and Z. 
Yeah, because it is a game. Like they're on radio and they're like, you know, it's fucking they're they're piling on. It just it was shitty to just to be on the complete other side of it. Like the piles yeah. happening on me. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, all right, motherfuckers. I think I was telling JP or one of the boys, I'm like, you know, I gotta start I gotta start taking the gloves off a little bit. I gotta start tripping back at these motherfuckers, dude. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll just bully you. Like, they'll just bully you. They do, they they will gang up, dude. That's the thing. You gotta keep your head on a swivel when you're in bar. And KFC, KFC just on his knees for Dave about I think it was an underreaction, Dave. Shut up, KFC. Little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so basically it was all just a big it seems like it's a big misunderstanding that's been blown up. And I feel like if people just listen to your story and Dave's story, they can figure out the truth somewhere in there. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know how it is. It's like all the bullshit out there on social media. Like, everybody's also having fun with it. Like, you know, you lean in, you get out, your boots on the ground, people are kind of like, hey, that shit's hilarious or whatever. Um, yeah. one, one but you just I don't saw... know. That's, that's also why I love fucking social media. It's just one of those things where I was on the other end and I had to get a little, you know, I had to, I had to bow up a little bit more and fucking, oh, okay, okay, who's, who's who in the zoo around here? Um, but it's going to be fun now because... I've said my apology. I've said all my shit. Anybody who listens, like you said, listens to that story and doesn't think like, oh, okay, this is a very good excuse. Yeah, everybody leans into it. Like it's, it's fucking no holds bars. Now, now we can have fun with it. Right. Right. Social media is, is a wild game. And like one thing that I saw a bunch during my week that I was even aware of that I probably should say something about is your boy's trigger discipline on that pistol. That is something oh, that, oh. Yeah, number one, yeah, like, uh, dude, we had the gun on there, and I was even thinking, like, oh, is that a gun? But then somebody's like, oh, yeah, they have, like, there's gun pages. Like, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I mean, I've fucking been on the gram oh, firing yeah, before, all before. Well, before we posted it, like I, Jack, I was like, I was like, Jack, is it, we can post, because there was a little bit of a co conversation for a little bit, like, <laughs> should we be able to, what's he doing? The fuck is we'll have fun. I was literally just having fun. <laughs> We were like we were talking about, should we even post a photo with a gun ball on? It's like all it all plays into the game of turning around. He had the silencer in the bathroom with Buddy that he was in Wyoming with, and so I grabbed the gun and I'm thinking, all right, there's no bullets in it, there's nothing in it. I've checked it three times and I had my finger on the trigger, and I did get like I didn't see all the comments because there was there like it was so many comments, so many. So, but I did every once in a while see like trigger discipline, trigger discipline, like you're an idiot. And I'm like, fuck dude. That's actually something I was 0% aware of. Zero. So I apologize. I should have had better trigger discipline. And that's it. I've said, sorry now. He said, uh, he said I apologize. I should have had better trigger discipline. <laughs> I should have, I, I should have, I should have had the common sense to take my finger off the trigger and not done that. I'm a fucking idiot for that. And so next time I hold a gun, I will make sure I not do that. So I appreciate it. I appreciate people saying something to me because I would have never have known if it wasn't for just getting absolutely dummied on the bird for a little bit. Well, fuck, at the end of the day, it's like, you look at Taylor and Jeffrey Star sitting there, Taylor's on the gun, like, you know, fuck it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he said, fuck it, dude. <laughs> we interrupt this episode to tell you about Game Time, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports, created by fans for fans. Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. It's possible with the Game Time app, the biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. We were in the situations on the spring tour. We didn't know what we were gonna do. Taylor didn't have any pull at Michigan. We hopped on the Game Time app secured us some of the best seats in the stadium, hopped on game time at South Carolina, best seats in the stadium. Game time was always there for the boys. With game time, you can skip the hassle and just enjoy the moment. Download the game time app or go to the website, enter your email and redeem code BUSSIN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Back to the episode. Um, you just said that's a fake gun. I don't know. My kids are sick, so I have to go soon. So do you want to talk about the Super Bowl? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, what a what a incredible, like, a top five Super Bowl that got ruined with a god, like, a god-awful call that, yeah, if you go rule book, strict rule book, frame the frame, you're going to find what you want to find. There's a penalty on literally every fucking play. But 
at that moment, in that moment. And the rest did a phenomenal job up to that point of letting the boys play, I felt like. And to make that call, I just, that's a fucking bummer. That is a fucking bummer. But I will say, I thought uh, the Eagles, Coach Sirianni, and I also saw Kelsey afterwards, uh, Jason Kelsey doing an interview afterwards, like handling it all with absolute class, man. Like it was, uh, it was really cool to see them handle all of their post game interviews the way they did. I know we're kind of just talking about the game in that moment, so we can go back to it. But uh, yeah, I just thought it was a a fucking thinking tack call, man. I thought it was a thinking tack call. But the Chiefs played their fucking balls off in that second half, and Mahomes rallied from a uh, like a ten point, a ten plus point deficit. Yeah, dude, watching. What you said was perfect with the refs. Like the refs were literally letting the game being played as the game. Like, yeah, there was there was holdings that weren't called. I know one specifically on the Chiefs. Um, Reddick fell down, and he kind of buried him and held him down a little bit. And um, uh, Mahomes scrambled between the right tackle and uh, right guard and dished it off and got like ten yards or whatever. And like, but the game was being called consistently for everybody. There was never like, oh, the Chiefs are getting calls or the Eagles. Like all the people that are in the narrative of like. Uh, oh, people just want the chiefs to win. Like, like that shit was not happening at all until that fucking call. When that call yeah. happened, it was like, not only yeah, like you said, frame by frame, you're going to get what you want. If you're looking and watching this game, it just doesn't, if you're reading a script, if the game is actually in a script, that part in the movie does not make any fucking sense. Cause the whole movie leading up to that point was letting the boys play minimal penalties. We're going to like, we're putting the ball down and we're letting the two best teams in the NFL figure it out for themselves. Winner, one's going to be a winner, one's going to be a loser, and the change the champion will be crowned. Like you said, it's a top five Super Bowl. It's incredible. There is, there's running, there's passing, there's big plays, there's touchdown, there's good special teams plays. Like there's a guy you miss a field goal. Like there's so much drama packed into that 17 hour window, or however long a Super Bowl is, and it's just like fucking. It was awesome. It was really good. Rihanna did a phenomenal job. The whole fucking thing was great. 10 out of 10 halftime it. show. They, they ruined it. And I'm not saying they ruined it because I wanted the Eagles win. I didn't have a dog in the fight. I just wanted the game to be played and finished out by the players deciding the game. And that ended the game. That truly ended the game with you had a minute 20 or um, a minute 30 left in the game. And that call doesn't happen. Maybe they just kick a field goal or they score. Cause you saw they were trying to let them score. They threw out the white flag. Like, Hey, let's let them score so we can go down and score and make the thing to overtime. Like strategically yeah. Sirianni did it correctly. He handled that letting them run. And then I'm not sure who had the ball. Uh, was it McKinnon? Number one who, who ran it. And then sure. he like, he slid. I like the half. Yeah, line slid, right, yeah. Them. Right before the end zone. Genius. And it's that smart, well-coached football. He they, they, everything was going the way it fucking should for an electric, possibly overtime Super Bowl. And like, who didn't want that? We sat there with eight minutes left in the fourth, and then we started rumbling. We started whispering, "Man, well, if we get an overtime Super Bowl, this is going to be fucking awesome." Because that's one of those games. Like, not every NFL game is like this. That truly was one of those games. You're like, man, I'm going to be bummed when this game ends because it's that fucking good. And the Chiefs, you know. It's just like Bills uh, Chiefs a few years ago when they go to overtime and Chiefs win the coin toss and they go win the game. Like that's just how it works sometimes. Like the Chiefs could have easily still won, but I just feel like that one piece of laundry that went out on the field late after a play really put a massive blemish on what would have been a top five Super Bowl of all time. Yeah, and the fact that it was high scoring, like I know everyone, like 35, 35, like these two teams, their offenses left it all in the field. Defense, like they played well at times. Like the Chiefs defense having that opportunistic play in the first half to give them to get them kind of back in the game because the Eagles were beating their ass in the first half. Uh, went into halftime down 10, and then, uh, dude, I mean, hats off to the Chiefs. Like they definitely fucking uh, willed their way back and got back in it, took, a, took the lead late. Um but it was an awesome Super Bowl. The halftime show was awesome. I know there are a lot of people chirping, and it's like, dude, Rihanna went out there and banged that stuff by herself. Not obviously with minimal. Like there was dancers, there weren't costume changes. It's just like she, Ella, she like levitates up on a platform, and she just body bag reminding everybody that she's like one of the baddest bitches in the world with all of her old jams. Spotify's going to be running. Uh, what is it? Rabbit, rampant. What is it? JP. Both rampant. 
rampant. Spotify, her Spotify list is going to be running rampant for the next couple of weeks because that's kind of the imprint that thing makes because every song she was playing, it's kind of like, oh shit, I forgot about this one. I hope Jay-Z pops out. I hope Eminem pops out. I hope Kanye West pops out. But nobody did. She absolutely murdered it. But yeah, if it wasn't for that call and the whole call thing is only mainly for me anyway, like the Chiefs, everyone knows that that was a ticky tack call. So I would have just loved to see in the end of that game. But other than that call and the way that that game kind of finished, because it left kind of like a, well, that fucking sucks, man. And taste in your mouth. Outside of that, that was a 10 out of 10 Super Bowl, bro. I agree, dude. It was, it was really good. I just wish that one thing wasn't there. I know. I know. Who knows what would have happened, dude? Like, just like, let's say they go score, they kick three, and then the Eagles. The Eagles could have just lost. They could have, they could have threw a pick. They could have got a fumble. Right, they could right. have gone, you Well, they're know. going down. They're going down to score to win, and we're all going to hit our bets and be happy. But yeah, yeah, they well, could have yeah, done, done that too. As in me and Jack. Yeah, so, like <laughs> I'm sitting there, just like I'm just and truly sitting here, enjoying being a fan, watching this game. Like all yeah, this stuff. Like man, I wish, I wish we were in it. I wish Titans were in the game. I wish I was playing ball, ball like that. That ends the minute the game starts, and you just like start to embrace like the 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 show that is the Super Bowl. And it's just yeah. insane. Absolutely insane. Up even to the commercials where the commercials are like people who don't even watch football literally go and watch Super Bowl for the commercials. Like it right. was such a good fucking game. And that shit just just ruined it. I mean it doesn't take away from the Chiefs. Like they could have easily like they won the Super Bowl, and even if that call wasn't made, they could. They were probably going to win the Super Bowl the way it was going. The, the the way the momentum was going, like they they did, man. They like they played their balls off in the second half. They made good adjustments. That time of possession in the first half, twenty two to eight, and then took a little bit more control and didn't like turn the ball over and played better defense. Um, they did. They played their balls off. They definitely deserve. Like they earned that Super Bowl. But it's not like I'm going to walk up and like a Chiefs fan or whatever else, like without being like, Hey, but that fucking call did you never fucking know. Like you guys didn't outright beat their ass because they didn't. And I will be salty about it. Um, I guess until next year, when I make the hot take that they won't make the playoffs again. You sticking to that, you think, huh? Probably. It was a fun little time this year. It was a fun. And everybody who listens, like I'm still going to lean into that on the, on the internet and everything else, but everybody who listens can now see like, Oh, you know, we'll just give them their flowers a little bit, but that's just our inside secret on bus with the boys. Cause there's a lot of people who chirp that don't listen to the episodes, so, which makes it more fun when I chirp back. So all the chiefs fans listening, yes. I, I just confidently gave you guys your flowers, but on the internet, we play a whole different game out there. Whole different game, brother. Well, should we hit the, uh, yeah. The shout out, no free shout outs. Yeah, we should absolutely hit out shout out for shout outs. We just have the boys today. So it is time for the greatest segment of the week. Shout out, no free shout out. JP, we're going to start with you because you're just to the left of my screen, buddy. What do you got for us today? This week, I have a shout out, but also could be a teaser for next week. But depending on what you guys decide to do, but my shout out, no free shout out goes to Taylor's high school guidance counselor, Dave Ziegler, because as we were waiting to try and get inside Drake's Super Bowl party, Dave walks out and he's like, oh, the Bussin' Boys, what's going on? Dave, how you doing? He's like, you guys go in there, y'all leaving? We're like, no, nah, we're actually trying to get in. And he goes, well, it was three, me, Jack, and Gary. He goes, well, I mean, you can have my wristband and my wife's wristband if you want. Popped the wristbands off, gave it to us. Obviously, we were still down one, but... So we didn't go in because you can never leave a soldier behind. But shout out to Absolutely. Dave. I love that. For even giving us shout the out to Dave, wristbands. Dude. He's the man. Dude, Dave's the fucking man. And because all this stuff with the Jeffree Star has blown up so much, we're doing Jeffree Star this week. Next week, you guys are going to see Dave Ziegler. He was fucking incredible, truly inside ball. It's amazing that relationship. Incredible. And I love that he loves the boys as well. Nice shout out. No free shout out, JP. Willie. Yeah, that was a good one. And what a boy move. What a boy move by Dave in that in that moment. Because I'm sure you guys are fired up and be like, oh, the bus and boys. Because there's masses of people. Like, I don't want, guys, this is, this, this Drake Super Bowl party was out at like a, a at a hangar at the airport. Like, and you're pulling up, there's black cars everywhere, there's cops everywhere, there's masses of people begging to get into this thing. And I'm sure him coming out and just seeing you guys and be like, oh, the bustin' boys, then dishing you guys some wristbands. What a high-level boy move by Dave Ziegler. Massive. Jack, or do you want me to go or you want Jack? You were in the middle for me, but Jack can go because you usually go uh, second to last. Yeah, I can go. Uh, mine is a two-part shout-out. 
but shout out every shout out to free stuff and also to CAA. Taylor being a rep with CAA, we got to go to their gift suite while we were in Arizona. And there's nothing better than getting free shit, but not just like a keychain or or a sticker, like some valuable things for guys love like sack, us. Rower. Love sacks, rowers, you know, gold chain. You know, we oh. want to talk about it too much. But yeah, shout out to Taylor, shout out to CAA, and especially shout out to free shit. Can't beat it. Fuck yeah, dude. CA, the best agency in the world, dude. By far. That's it? Yeah, I thought you were going on. I thought you were doing something there. No, no I, just incredible. <laughs> he said, by far. I'm just like, yeah, sure. yeah it's good. That's good. I'm like salty. <laughs> what you got, Willie? What, what hard right, my... stuff you got today? <laughs> <laughs> my... Shout out, no free shout out goes to pegging. Um, I'm just fucking around. My shout out, no free shout out. And I like this little detail, detailed one because I thought of it on my drive down to Tucson on Friday morning when I was missing, like just anxiety high, like, man, I hope this works out perfect so I can make it back for the interviews in the afternoon. But I'm driving, the sun's out. My shout out, no free shout out goes to not the visor that you pull and block the sun in the car, but the little sliding the little sliding door, the little extension that you get, like when you hit the side mirror or the side window and you gotta, you gotta move it out. Cause it played a crucial role in my drive home. And I just, that is my shout out. No, for shout out that little, that little slide door within the visor, you know, am I saying all that right? Is it called a visor? I think so. I don't really know what you're talking about. I, I think so. I know you're talking about it. It's, it's the rear view mirror, but or like the thing you like, pull hey, out, Taylor, but then the you know extension you- part. Yeah, you, you oh, when you're in the car yeah, driving, yeah, yeah. you pull down the thing to block the sun, you know, check yourself out every now and then, like when you slide it open. But that little extension on the side to help get that little extra sun block. That's my yeah, shout-out, yeah. no free shout-out. That's a solid shout-out, no free shout-out, now that I figured out what it was. My <laughs> shout-out, no free shout-out. for a second. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's got to be a tough <laughs> feeling, too. <laughs> just my shout-out. Just wear sunglasses, bro. <laughs> that is and I did have them next to me. That's what's funny. My shout out, no for shout out is going to be, it goes out the GBOT. You go out with the boys, you hit a vacation, you do a little bender on the weekend, Friday, you do the Drake thing, Saturday, you do waste management, Sunday, you're drinking on Sunday, but Monday, you have a big decision to make. Who are you going to be for the rest of that week? Cause that's going to start off what you're going to do for the, for Monday through Friday and how you're going to get back on track. That's what GBOT stands for. I felt like shit this morning. I didn't want to get up. I got up. I went to Exos. Willie and I went to Exos. We got that fucking workout in. We got shit done the way we're supposed to do and started out our week the correct way. And that's just getting right back into what your daily routine is, no matter what the circumstance. And so my shout out for shout out goes to getting back on track. Solid. I still like, even though we did work out and I'm like, I know I can feel good about myself. I, this was one of the first times where I did the workout and I still like, man, I still wish I would have stayed home type of deal. But I'm glad I did it. You know what I mean? I'm glad you drug me out. I was like, I texted Taylor this morning. I said, Hey, what are your thoughts on, uh, what are your thoughts on being soft today and not going in and, you know, just kind of being a little lazier and just staying at home. He's like, oh, right, I'm going to go in and knock this thing out. We kind of told the guy, yada, yada. He's like, it look, it, it wouldn't look good if we both don't go. He's like, I'm just trying to go in and knock this thing out. So I was like, all right, I'll go. We win, you know, obviously bodied it up, but it was a good yeah, one. Good. It was a solid one. It was a solid one. Are we missing anything else, boys? I think we're good. All right. Well, JP, anything? Said, with that being said, boys, we are going to get into this Jeffree Star episode after this ad that you're going to see from either JP, Jack, or any of the boys on the bus. We will be back and our original seats next week. Big hugs, tiny kisses, and enjoy this very unique ride. Yes, hell of a conversation coming up. I'm actually going to personally listen as well because I want to hear I want to hear the entire dynamic of the show and all your questions and how he answered because I'm fired up that he did come on the podcast. Yeah, dude, it's sick. You're going you're gonna to love it. All right, all right boys. boys. We interrupt this episode to tell you about NASCAR and the legendary Daytona 500 happening 
on February 19th at 2.30 Eastern time on Fox. The Daytona 500 is considered the most prestigious and important race in NASCAR and has opened the NASCAR season every February since 1982. And yes, the legend Jimmy Johnson will make his NASCAR Cup Series return, his first NASCAR Cup Series return since 2020. And another GOAT will be there. Travis Pastrana is attempting to qualify for the Daytona 500. Tune in to Fox at 2.30 Eastern time on February 19th for the Daytona 500. Back to the episode. Well, as the boys are walking around, we are officially rolling on a very special episode of Bustin' with the Boys. What a wild opportunity for two weird fan bases to come together and become that one. Genius. I know. Oh, you better so, turn that down. That's We're all right. Set design on set. Set design. Uh, Mia? We have to. Camila. Camila, excuse me. Camila <laughs> is ripping up, doing the lights and stuff like that. So let's just break down how this whole thing came to pass. Yeah. You, when you decide you were going to come on this podcast, you're extremely. Yep. Extremely helpful. A lot of times, it's taken you do this. You get radio silence for a little bit. You have been very communicative. Direct, yeah, yeah, from the get go, which yeah. I truly appreciate. So about communication is key. Communication is absolutely key. Let's say a week ago. Let's call it ten days ago. Okay. There is this rumor, this uh, rumbling going around around in the NFL community that <clears throat> some gentleman is with Jeffrey Star on his way to Wyoming. Right. You take a photo. I believe the first photo was this man's ankles. <laughs> With his with his vans, his ankles aren't that strong, but he runs fast. Okay, yeah. well that checks off my box. I am <laughs> that is one. Now he's the, a fast runner. Yeah. So <laughs> so during this, like I, now the only reason why I find this out is people yeah. are tagging us. Terrell Lawan in Wyoming right so now. Sorry. No, I loved it. <laughs> this is this this got us to this point now, here, which I think yeah. is incredible. We're in Arizona, and I was already coming to the Super Bowl. I've been before. Okay. I love it. It's fun. There's always fun parties. Mm -hmm. A lot a lot of excitement. No doubt. So this is a great opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is a great opportunity. Yeah. So everyone thought that I was sleeping with you, but I'm really fucking one of your friends. Okay. That's the short version. That's the short version. <laughs> you posted another photo of this yeah. gentleman wearing, was it Gucci? It was something designer with his back to it. Oh, had a similar his, haircut his to me. like construction yes. outfit. It was like this big denim. Right. Yeah. And so. Wyoming thing. And the color of the outfit does not match the team. I think people were wondering that. That was a question, yeah. too, because there's a gentleman that plays for the Cleveland Browns. And who's that? His name is Wyatt Teller. Oh, okay. And that was a name that was thrown around. Sorry, Wyatt. I don't know you, but it seems like you're out of Sorry, the woods. Wyatt. I'm busy right now. I'm booked this weekend. Call but, her. Uh, Call him. Hit me up next week. No doubt about it. Yeah. So people are starting to remember. They're starting to say things. I tweet out because this is a fun thing for me. Am I in Wyoming? Yeah, and you have humor, and you actually can have fun with yeah. life. Yeah, it's, it's all about a comfortability, <laughs> especially... When you don't know what you are. Yep. I'm kind of just figuring that out life out for myself now. I'm married with two kids, but I, I will switch up in a second if yeah, I have I to. Yeah. If life if life <laughs> gives you lemons, That's you right. fuck those lemons. Right. That's what you do. So you, how did you see that tweet? Because you obviously don't follow me. You follow one person on Twitter. Yeah, I unfollowed everyone a few years ago for a mental cleanse because people were just getting too weird. Yeah. You know, the, the, you, then you unfollow someone and you still like them in real life, but you hate their content and they get they take it personal. That happened with AJ Brown. He's a receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles now, but he wasn't the Titans. He unfollowed me. I asked him why. He goes, because you play too much. Wow. I took that on. So I took no that. Humor. I can't move forward. It's giving blocked. <laughs> He's about to win a Super Bowl, probably. Yeah. So you're verified. So I saw your tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's it. Yeah, that was it. That was it. I wasn't searching for it. <laughs> and you, saw, I didn't know if people were tagging you or whatever. No, so there you, was, yeah, then there was a lot of replies, and then your name was popping up, and I was like, "Who is this?" Yeah. Yeah. What'd you think? Hot. Thanks. Yeah. I, I needed that more yeah. than ever. It's been a rough week for me. Yeah. So you say you do, you need an invite, and the the game is officially being played, right? We're officially yeah. playing this multiplayer game on social and hot media. White. And thank you. A lot of the times, yeah, she is a rocket. Yeah, I do appreciate. And she doesn't. A lot of your acquaintances or other fellow teammates, mm -hmm. their wives are busted. It looks like they just settled, and once the check hit, they didn't know what to do. Oh no! Giving, they're stuck. Is there anything that come? Anybody that comes to mind specifically? Oh God! What was the, the wife that got really mad? That's there definitely was, yeah. one of them. Yeah. Do you think she's ugly? Or I don't Henry. actually don't know. Do who, uh, or Henry? Hey, was Henry. It Henry? Yeah. So people thought it was Henry. Yeah. And she got mad. Yeah. There must be a lot of questions that relationship possibly. Definitely a lot of personal issues. Because why? Well, see, the thing is that she wrote me before like paragraphs. And there was like, I'm going to use legal action if you don't. Da, 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 how do you do things. that? You can't. She's just, 
I don't know if she made it up. Yeah. So I was going to screenshot it and post that and be funny. And I was like, you know what? It's a new year. I'm just going to be quiet. It's mm -hmm. all good. So I actually swiped, deleted the DM. 10 minutes later, the bitch is back. Because you can tell when someone deletes it because it vanishes. Oh, really? So she was back with the little short blurb. And I was like, oh, no, she's trying me. And so, so. You, you went out to the masses to let them know. Yeah. I just felt it was so annoying and insecure. And and I, I never even heard of him before. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably um, so mad the next morning, like, you dumb bitch. Well, I actually know my agent, mm -hmm. my agent was, uh, I was on the phone with him because once you and I started talking, there was a possibility you're coming on the show. It's a big deal. And I was talking to him. He says, I have another player who was in a similar boat. People were tagging him. And he calls him at 1 a.m., fucking pissed. Why? Like, why the fuck is this dude doing this? I'm not like that, blah, 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 all this shit. And then the next day, he sends him my tweets. Yeah. Of like, listen, just play into it. Have fun and get over it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like, there's a level of like, listen, like people take themselves a little too seriously. They do. That's, yeah, and, that's yeah, what, yeah. and that's what happens. So it's, if anything, this is going to be really good for the NFL and for us. It is. Yes. Yeah. You, we're mending bridges. Maybe I'll have my own seat at the... Possibly. One of the, one of the arenas. Football is one of the more homophobic sports. See, that's what I heard, but I've been to so many games and I've hung out with a lot of people and I've never had that experience. It's more in the locker room. Oh, yeah, because you do, you try lot. to do a couple things. <laughs> you try to do a couple things to mess with dudes. Hey, I ain't about that oh, shit. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they get frustrated. But, I know, because they, yeah, that's, <laughs> oof. It's just, that's some psychological shit. Yeah. It's on them, yeah. That's actually. You can joke and laugh and normal, you're just a normal person. So if you get. Yeah really weird or insecure or you take offense, there's some deep-rooted things that they haven't dealt with. Yeah, you, so you think those individuals are fighting their sexuality. Oh my God, demonic. <laughs> That's got to be a tough life to live to not live your true <laughs> They're self. They're just fighting to suck a dick and they won't do it. It's like, try it, move on. Yeah. You gotta try everything twice in life. Exactly. That's what you got to do. But what's crazy is these, these random women have started DMing me. I went to college with, what's her name? Henry's wife. Um, I don't know how to pronounce her name. That's okay. Her name's awful. It's probably fair not to put it out there for her too, yeah, out of respect for her. Yeah, yeah, we don't want her to get more mad. Yeah, I just put a hit on me. Like a hit Maybe. On me. I feel like you've got way more connections than she does, though. Even though I don't know Henry's wife, can we pull that? Can we find out who it is. Thank I you. Her name, but oh, I'm not concerned. Wyoming has a lot of land. A lot of land. <laughs> you've watched Yellowstone, right? I've seen Yellowstone. Yes. Yeah. So when they when they go to. Get rid of someone, where do they go? They go to that border, right? Is it that Wyoming? It's real, yeah. It's actually real. It's a piece of land where this is an You're awful You're putting a lot segment. of implications out there this already. Is an awful segue. We're not talking about this. Yeah. No, wow. Wyoming has a piece of land that has nothing to do with anyone. Yeah. In Wyoming. Yeah. yeah. And you can get but rid you of You would, if a situation came up where she pushed the line that much, she'd she find wants... herself in that piece of land. I don't think she's going to call the hit, man, but I definitely think she wants to type Carol Baskin me. Like she wants to get rid of me. Yeah. That's fair. Has anyone I, talked to Henry? Should we call him right now live? I don't have Henry's number. Her, his wife name is Saren. And it's Henry who? Henry Anderson. How do I know that name? Is he a defensive lineman? Played for the Colts? Played for the Panthers? White dude, right? He's got to be a white dude. Hello, that's why we're here. Yeah, that is why we're here. I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That was stupid. This is why this is a terrible show, and you're only you're only making it better. Show the black guys that sleep with are NF, like are NBA or rappers. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. also another homophobic community. Yeah. So how do you wiggle, like, wiggle rapper, yourself into no, that? The rapper culture, they try to be all tough, but they're all down for anything. All of them. No, I don't want to say all. That, see, that's where I'm gonna there, put there, you in a little there hole are, there. There's a small group of dudes that just love pussy, and I love pussy too. I just prefer men. So, but the <laughs> men pussy. Yeah, no, all of it. All of it. Yeah, I love threesomes, foursomes, orgies. Yeah, because when we were talking the other day, you said I got back to this gangbang. I was on a Zoom with yeah. my uh, employees. So it was a mental gangbang. It was a mental yeah. gangbang. No, but I'm into anyone. If whoever's mm. attractive, I'm into you. Yeah. So when we go to this Wyoming trip, what made you want to Post tweet about that and and do all that is it for the fun of the game for the love of the game with the bird yeah it's fine to cause a stir and he was down because he doesn't have any tattoos and i did this game before a few mm. years ago and there the person was discovered the next day yeah because of their tattoos but it was just to be funny so i don't know i just wanted to start off 23 letting everyone know we're here <laughs> we're here and we're about it yeah um and yeah so no one has figured it out which is great yeah so and he doesn't care if Anyone at the end of the day maybe found out later, but right now 
doesn't want to be on the news. So he's not openly out there. No. So we can take Carl Nazib loves, off the list. He loves vagina. Really? Yeah. He just likes to try on a, a different thing once in a while. Yeah. He, yeah. It gets boring. How long were you guys in Wyoming for? Oh, God. We got snowed in. I felt bad. Because, yeah, well, obviously, season's over. Yeah. And I'm the new season. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> we definitely got snowed in. But, you know, we have a team there and ranch hands and assistants. And we got... We had, we had a lot of fun. And is that like your residence is actually Wyoming? Yeah, I sold my house last year, finally. Is there a reason for that? You just wanted to... I have born a raised term from Huntington Beach. Really? So I, I'm tired of California. I'm bored of it. You're over uh, it. Yeah. Dude, I'm a... I'm stoked to have you on because I know nothing about you. That's so good. I want to learn... <laughs> I, I want to learn everything, like everything I possibly can. So in life, we're all playing characters. Yes. Right now, the character of Jeffree Star is a provocative, controversial one. How did birth? How did you become that? So you grew up in Huntington, Huntington Beach. Yeah, I've always just been fearless. So while everyone else was like sun tanning and being surfers, I had like a ten inch mohawk, and I was very punk rock, and I was yeah. going to all the shows. Like 182 fan. Oh, I love them. Yeah, my favorite band of all yeah. time. So I grew up with like listening to Hatebreed and Slayer mm -hmm. and things like that. So which is a which is a much different than the figure we're looking at right now. It is, yeah. So but when I went to all the shows looking like this, people respected me, and I felt at home in the music scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so as you get older, what, how did this all come about? When you're, we're wearing dresses, Internet. we got the, we got the hair, yeah. we have, we, we do cosmetics. Is that the correct thing to say? Cosmetics? Yes, sir. And you have a, a Amer uh, cosmetics company in America. Oh brother, you're Crazy. crushing, you're crushing the game right now. Makeup's my favorite thing. But I did music for a long time. So I've, I've been on the internet for 20 years since yeah. I was 16. That's a long time. Yes. Yeah, so, so you found the internet all as an my, outlet for all you. All my successes, heartaches, failures, they've all been thrown up everywhere. Yeah. Was that was that difficult for you at first, like being on the internet and putting yourself out there? Because the job I'm in, you're out there and people are, you're being judged from a skill and a talent level, you but like not in a personal. Do you, do you still care? There's ups and downs. Yeah. I think I, I still get caught. I still get caught in the uh, situation where if I play a game and there's 10 great comments about me, but one negative comment, yeah. I tend to focus a lot on that Fans negative are comment. crazy. They blame you for ruining the game. Has yes. that happened yet? Oh, all the time. I've played yeah. over 100 games in the NFL. I think it's happened over 100 times. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that is the situation. The fans, That's the world they, we live they, in. They take it serious. Extremely. Like when their teams didn't make it the other day, the other day what, mm. a week ago, two weeks ago? Uh, about three, were like, four weeks ago, right? They came for blood. Yeah, it is. It's really like that. So do you, do you think you, in the beginning, struggle with the fact that people are seeing everything in your life, being on the internet for 20 years, where things can get dug up all the time, relived, oh, revamped? I've been canceled 10 times. It's kind of like a after party now. It's like a nice little, it's a season for you. <laughs> yeah, you're only canceled if you really let someone cancel you. Right. what I believe. Or if you actually do horrendous things, right? Yeah. I, there's been so many lies made up about me at this stage, I just don't care. You don't care. No. But in, in the beginning, did you care? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 What was like the hardest things for you to start that you struggled with people? Ooh. Mm, I think maybe not knowing who I was because in the old days, remember MySpace, like I really played into a character. Mm -hmm. So once I grew up, I let the real me out more and that's when I became way bigger. Yeah. yeah. When you say you struggled with who you really were, like who were you pretending to be back then? Too outlandish. Like shock, I was all about the shock value. Yeah. And you don't think you're still about the shock value? <laughs> mm, maybe at a way lower level. Brother, you you yeah. were posting photos of you and an NFL player Yeah. Oh, but with, the, a, with a pistol and a silencer on it. Wasn't that cool? Like you're, yeah, it's right badass. Out. It's absolutely <laughs> badass. And it's like, that's very would it qualify as outlandish? I just love at the, at the end of the day, I'm a I'm a dude, right? I know I don't look like one sometimes, but I love gun sports, hunting. Mm -hmm. but I also love looking like this. So I think that's what shocks people. And when did you find out that like, okay, if I just stick to my true self, then I'm solid? For, I've always been this way. Now you just said a second ago that you were struggled with it for a little bit. No, no, that's very true. But yeah. I think just being me, looking the way I wanted to be, was yeah. just like this is who I am. Either like me or don't. You know, I love that. Yeah. So I think, and I'm, you know, and I'm, and I'm not a snitch. So I think guys feel comfortable hanging out with me. Yeah, because they know I'm not gonna kiss and tell. How did you get into put into a position where you were titled as not a snitch? Not a position. Um, well, there were positions. I think just time in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just getting reps like after I'm reps, a rap boys. Ho. No. Um. Yeah. I just, I've just never kissed and told. I had a lot of rumors about me. Like mm. everyone thought I fucked Kanye a year ago. Yeah, Mitch brought that up. Awful. Mitch, Mitch's girlfriend is, a, is a huge fan of yours. Rumor, right? Did you Ugh. fuck Kanye? No, he's so short. Ugh. Did he try to fuck you? No comment. That's all I needed. <laughs> 
flip it, boys. <laughs> and the interview is <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. Too short. Really? What am I going to do with that floss? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. Stop. Kim is so small. Shout out to Kim. I love her. She's so little. You guys are I, friends? I got it. Yeah, we're acquaintances. Right. You guys have been around each other. You're both in the same space. Yes. And so during this space, it could have been very easy for a guy like Kanye to come up to you and try to catch hands. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's a. It was more so fun hooking up with his friends. Okay. Fellow rappers, we'll say. <laughs> okay. I'm, I don't know. I'm a Scorpio. I'm a sexual person. And I had a nice, almost six year relationship. And once that ended, it was just back on the hoe train, you know? <laughs> back on the hoe yeah. train for you. I was in love once. It was great. Now it's time to get back to work. It's time to. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I love that. So Kanye's friends. Yeah. They're in the game. Yeah. And is it easy for you? So like, I feel like the gay community is tough because like you don't know who's gay and who's not. Right. Did you, how do you figure out who's gay and who's not? In what sense? See, I'm not like, if you walk into a bar, I'm you walk really, in, you uh, see all of us, let's say Jack's gay. Jack doesn't look gay from the Jack. standpoint of like what you'd say, oh, this person's gay. For a mustache ride. You know, yeah. You do have a phenomenal mustache, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bud. I needed that. But like, how do you, how do you weed through that? Because I'm literally, the reason why I ask these questions is because we live two completely different lives. Yes. And I'm literally actually sitting here I'm, trying to educate myself and the people listening. Most this, of my this friends, different world. especially in Wyoming, all look like you guys. There's, the, the gay population is so <laughs> rare out there. Yeah. Yeah. So why? But even before be a hard place here, because I've been in LA for 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. Most of my friends are straight. Yeah. And so how do you figure out you who's just, gay? You just ask. But a lot of guys can hook up and not be gay. They're just them. See, I think that's a controversial t subject. I know. Like there's a phrase, you can be a painter. You can paint a thousand paintings and never be called a painter. Right. But if you suck one dick, you're a cocksucker for life. <sighs> But what if you get your dick sucked and just like it? That's the game we're playing. A dude. A dude that likes getting their dick sucked. Yeah. By who cares who it is? I don't know. If you go Sounds back to gay. the time of... Uh, <laughs> 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 so, valid point. That is a, that is so a good point. Easy. You don't have to complicate it. Yeah. We were really all put on this earth way back in the day as cavemen, right? And everyone was just fucking and procreating. Mm -hmm. right? There was no feelings and marriages and sensitivity and all this shit. We added that later. So men were put on this earth to fuck. And I'm that vessel. <laughs> <laughs> it's just simple psychology. So yeah. when guys get bored of their whoever, they, maybe they want to go to something else or maybe they've never explored because of religion and politics and their dumb parents teaching them that, hey, this is wrong and boys are blue and girls are pink. So now we live in a different world, I think. This is not the you case. Can, you can open up your mind, your hands, your mouth, your legs, and you can just be yourself. <laughs> It seems like religion's definitely like the key piece yeah, in that. Like there's, I, I've known people, um, I know an individual that was actually married at one point to a woman and was questioning his sexuality consistently. Literally went to conversion therapy because of, from a religious standpoint. Oh Lord, that's crazy. He ends up f truly figuring out who he is. Yeah. And now he's, he's gay and that's his, like, that's his deal. And he's, he's super comfortable with where he is. Okay. So. That's crazy. Yeah. But when do you think... From a, from a child's standpoint, mm -hmm. when you're talking to somebody, they're a young eight-year-old boy. Like, we, we don't know. We have no idea what we want, what we don't like, want. I have no idea people who are gay, if they say they were born that way or they came into it. be attracted to someone and they don't know what it means. Right. When yeah. do you think it's like an appropriate time for, to let that child, I guess, ask those type of questions and understand those types of things? They can ask them, but I think when a parent tries to direct them to a certain way too young, not it. Not, not it. No. If, you're, if your daughter looks like a tomboy, it doesn't mean she wants to be a boy. It means she wants to explore her creativity and you should yeah. let her be her. Yeah, that's like a hard thing. Like, like the transgender thing is like, I just don't understand it. Yeah. So I just like, I do my best to be like, hey, people do whatever they want. But I, they say like the brain's not there's developed. There's so many layers. There's so many layers. And yes. All of you fucking hate it. <laughs> no, it's just crazy. It, it's just, it's no, a, it's mentally complicated because the, our culture has made it more complicated. Yeah. That's the problem. It seems like, yeah, it definitely seems that way because the brain's not like developed till 25. I, I'm not into all the other bullshit. I think. What other bullshit? The they, um, the they and them. Yeah. And all that extra shit that we added during the pandemic because everyone mm. was so bored on their fucking houses. They just started to make up more shit and more, more shit. More stuff, more stuff. Yeah. That's where the conservatives like me because I'm just real. 
Yeah, you There's do have no, a conservative you're vibe to you. Them. You're trans, you're male or you're female. And you're standing and on that. so mad when I say that. Mm -hmm. How are you a they? What the fuck does that mean? It's stupid is what it is. Yeah. But you need someone like me that looks like me to say it. Because if you say it, it turns into you're homophobic. You hate trans people. You hate gays. And it's just how you feel. You don't hate anyone. You just think it's stupid. Yeah, I can sit here, I can sit here comfortably on camera and say, like, I, I truly just don't understand it. Yeah, and that's okay. But that's as far as I can go. Yeah, it doesn't mean you're hateful. Yeah, and then you, like you said, like, you are the perfect vessel for this type of situation. Yeah. You are you steam head in that? Are you making sure that people know? Hey, listen, no, there are I, no I've days in them. A lot about it because I I love doing certain things like in the gun world or like you know, and I go to a lot and do a lot of podcasts for things that are not beauty related. And I think mm. that's what's fun. Yeah, you know, I got you. Yeah. Um, well, how did you start your beauty empire? Ooh, so I did music for a long time. Yes. I was on now my, you say, what kind of music did you do? So I was going to go to college to be a psychologist. Yeah. And then MySpace happened and I created a character and I, it went really big and viral before viral was a word. Mm -hmm. And I was like the first person to me, I, I call it me and Paris Hilton. We capitalized way back in the day on how to make money off of being a personality from internet and TV. Now, were you friends with Paris Hilton at this yeah. time? Yeah. That's she's awesome. awesome. Still to this day, she's always been a real really? one. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. And I would love to see a photo of you two together. There's some on there. Then. Yeah. Google. There's some Do you good, know what that is? Good ones. You know what Google? Pop that up. Yeah. He's on OnlyFans right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. You said you're not on OnlyFans. Okay. He, why would he be on OnlyFans if you're not on there? Are any of you actually subscribed to girls on there and it actually is usable or is it all a scam? I don't have an OnlyFans account. Someone's lying. <laughs> it's, a, it's a scam? I just don't, like, I don't know if you want to get off. Why do I want to follow a creator and, like, pay them money and do all these things? Like, it's just so... It's like cameo meets porn, right? Yeah. That's, like, the whole the whole idea behind it. So last year, they offered me a lot of money, and I was going to do it. We shot some content, and then I was like, eh, this is not for me. Like, I don't need the money. <laughs> no, yeah, listen, so we know, like yeah. another thing to do. And I was like, no, that's not the route we're going. But so. if you're going to do it anyway and you're comfortable, why not? Like, if you're going to fuck... Yeah, you don't mind being viewed. Some fucking. great photos on my phone. We're in private jets, sucking dick, and all this stuff, and it was great fun. Thanks for taking those. Um, but <laughs> you know, yeah, at perfect lighting. That's, you know, yeah, you do a phenomenal job with lighting. <laughs> it would have been the best. If we had now. an extra one, that'd be nice. Make sure of it, all this. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> so you do all this content. You're on jets. We're sucking dick. Yeah. We're having a great time. Yeah. Penises are flying everywhere. everywhere. And you think to yourself, I don't want to do OnlyFans anymore. Yeah. Not crazy. Yeah, I why? Have a secret folder on my phone because it just wasn't right. And my team was like, "Do you really want to do this?" So I have an autobiography coming out at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a TV show for my ranch. I raised 300 Tibetan yaks, and I have camels and a full operation. And we boy, Mitch, we sell meat. We're the biggest meat operation for yaks in America now. I've never consumed a yak before. It's the healthiest red meat in America. Yes, I feel like that's what everyone. That's what they said about yeah. bison. Mm -hmm. At one point, Healthier. they said that about cows. I know, but the USDA is a liar. Just more, once there's more education. So right. I'm helping yak science right now with the University of Wyoming. Yeah, you're slowly taking down the yak population. I am. I'm vegetarian. Oh. No, I'm not. I'm just kidding. I was going to be just so trying to be sad. unique in the situation. <laughs> so MySpace comes out, you're you're like, hey, fuck the psychology thing. I'm done with this. Yeah, and then it just blew up. So I did, and then I, I what, started What made music. it blow up? So you were, you were doing, the music is what blew up. Yeah. Well, I think people, everyone just signing up to this crazy platform when social media was so new and green. It mm -hmm. was the biggest site on the planet. And I was posting pictures, pretending to throw up cereal and all this fucking crazy shit. And yeah. I just became one of the number one people on there. So you, yeah, you were a trailblazer for the viral community. Yes. Before it all. So then I did music. You as did a music. Joke. And yeah. then it became, I was. Were you um, any good? Yeah, it was fun. Was it? Were you, it that, was like Depeche Mode, punk rock, pop, electronic. Got you. Yeah. Like a postal service type dope. of vibe. Yeah. Okay. So we got really big. Big independent. Then I signed with Akon, Convict Music. Mm -hmm. There's pictures of me, Paris Hilton, and Akon on Google. Is Akon? Um, shout out to Akon. Oh, yeah. Hey, Kesha. Really? Hell yeah. And boy, Jack. Jack from the back back ropes there. Kesha went to Jack's high school. That's right. Tennessee? Yeah. Wow. That's cool. I love it out there. Yeah. You see you out there for Beretta yeah. Conference every year. Isn't that Two, cool? Twice a year. So makeup got me into the gun world and all these cool things. Yeah. The, the, How, the like, head of Beretta, Mr. Beretta, his girlfriend is a beauty influencer in Italy. And really? she loves my page. So living in Wyoming, we can actually, you know, open carry, conceal carry. You can have a silencer on your gun. 
next to you in the seat and it's normal. In LA, you'd probably get shot and killed. Yeah, you can only have like three rounds in LA. Anyway, horrible. <laughs> so I post uh, a Beretta in my cup holder with my Red Bull. Like, good morning, everyone. Because it's yeah. fine that I can post these things now and, and buy them. So she sees it, shows him, and Beretta reposted me. And I was like, this is my one shot, baby. So I go, hey, would y'all want to do a custom pink gun for me? And they were like, yeah, when you want to fly to Italy, we'll fly you here. Oh, we've no done, shit. We've done two projects now. And I'm just like, they're unreal. Yeah. What, was that, what was that process like going over there? Like other facilities? It's incredible. Same. Yeah. They're the, so they're one of the only gun manufacturers that are family owned still. So for 500 years, they're all the wars. They are stayed to themselves. They um, just kept it in the family the entire yeah, time. They do over a billion dollars in, in, oh, sorry, sorry. in, in firearms a year. Mm-hmm. It was nuts. So I'm very big into guns. Yeah, I, I, I figured scene. that out in the small time. I didn't. I did no homework on this episode yeah. at all. Yeah. So I'm like, I think like 120 now. So they mm-hmm. made me a custom pistol, and then they just did me a submachine gun, a uh, CX4. Now let me let me play devil's advocate. Let me be the person that doesn't like the Second Amendment. I like the I Second can't. Amendment. Let I me play can't. this. What? Who needs 120 guns? A collector, someone that's filthy rich and fucking bored. Say less. <laughs> <laughs> seems like you, that's seems it. like you've done that. I'm so tired of that that question. Isn't Not from you. Just it, well, it's the first time I've asked that? it. I don't need anything. Right. I don't need. You know what I mean? I want it. That makes that's sense. The American way. I know people. When foreigners come and visit, they think it's so crazy at how many guns are in Wyoming. We're like 10, 10 per capita at, per house. For real. Mm-hmm. There's like fifteen and houses. We're in the Wyoming. only place in America that has the sanctions. If the government took our guns away, which will never happen, probably. That Wyoming is clear, <laughs> clear and free. Oh, for real? Yeah, we're going. Like we're going to the zone. pink bunker. You're not taking my shit. No doubt. What if? What yeah. would you do if two guys showed up to your house? Ooh. And said, <laughs> and they're not there for that. Oh. They said we'll get to that in a second. Oh. Okay. But we want all your guns. Put them in the back right here. Oh, they're trespassing, so they're getting blasted. Brother. Hello. Stand your fucking hey, ground, Mister. Would love that comment. Are you kidding me, officer? I'm scared for my life. Bang. Yeah. Just like that. Bang, bang. See, I'd be scared about that. I'm kind of a pussy when it comes to that. No one's I own guns. No one trespass. I have a thousand acres. I have big gates and a security guard and cameras and motion detectors. And yeah, no one's getting. And the yaks are really friendly to me, but they'll gore you. Really? Yeah. I don't know anything about yaks. I ain't got nothing. So MySpace is blown up. We're, I feel like we're all over the place on this thing. It's okay. <clears throat> MySpace is blown up. <laughs> Things are going good. You're faking throwing up cereal. You're doing yes. a band that resembles Blink-182 meets the Postal Service. Some 41's touched in there a little bit. And you throughout like it, it all, I don't reach the success that I think I should be at. I'm signing. And what numbers are we talking about to reach the success? <sighs> like low album sales, but concerts sold out. There's thousands of people. The merch sales are insane. Mm-hmm. So I sign a deal and it doesn't go according to plan. And I become a slave to the music industry like Kesha and like all these others. And I get controlled Cheap. And my career gets ruined. They don't do anything that I want. And they mm-hmm. just dumb down everything. They like how crazy I am. And then they want to ruin my vision and make it like Disney punk. So it was just like, oh. And that made you go to... Uh, I was heartbroken. I was depressed. I was. It was awful. I was in this little two-bedroom apartment in NoHo. Just stuck. Like, what the fuck? Stuck so in I LA. quit, fired everyone. And I was like, I want to go back to what I love. And that's makeup. So I asked a friend for a loan. And I took my life savings that I had and made three lipstick colors. <clears throat> and that was 2014. And now I've probably sold almost 20 million lipsticks since then. And it's just been insane. Yeah. So Who is- I, I started as just like a little whim on e-commerce on my little site. And it sold out in 20 minutes. I paid the guy back in five minutes. <laughs> That's um, crazy. And, the, and then I invested. A lot of these people that get new money, they just blow it all. Mm-hmm. They want to be cool on Instagram. They want the cars, the clothes, the jewelry, all that's great if you can actually afford it. Mm-hmm. And half of these people can't. So yeah, they're invested. leasing it. They're on lease. They're le- they're leasing it. The you wife, own the shit outright because once the money goes away, she's fucking his homie. Yeah, they're all on lease. Or into what's her name? She'll probably be gone soon someday. The girl that was getting pissed at you, the NFL girl. I don't want to say her name again. I feel that bad means. saying her name. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to gas her, oh, dude. Fault. Henry Anderson. Sorry, bud. I'm, I'm, I'm heartbroken. Henry, We're going through look, this. If she's pregnant and she's ever bored and too tired and he needs a, a substitute, call me. Yeah. No hard And then we can connect that. I have your number yeah, now. My DMs are open. <laughs> They're yeah. open for business. What's scary, though, is since all this has happened and I posted my friend, uh, other players have hit me up. No way, dude. Yeah. Now you did I'll say, show you a few off camera. That's what I was going to say. You did say you are going to show me a couple yeah. things as long as I'm trustworthy. 
I don't know how I'm doing in that situation. Mm. We'll find out at the end of this whole mm-hmm. thing. Um, You're sociopathic a little bit. Psychology major. You are. You are a little. Yeah, that is like Tanner. It. He is absolutely sociopathic. Yeah. Like you don't like humans much, but you like animals. Yeah. Tanner likes humans. Yeah. Tanner's one of the guys. Are uh, you guys related or no? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tanner, oh, Tanner and I have known each other since we were five years old. Nicotine? Zen? Do you want one? Stop. You want one? What is that? A pouch? Yeah, it's a pouch. For right here? Yeah. Oh my God, my ranch hands use this. They always need, need extra. You're salty your people. You want to try one? Absolutely not. They're outstanding. I've never even smoked a cigarette. Oh, that's right. We did have, but this is not a cigarette. This is nicotine. Oh, no. I don't know if you follow biohackers at all, but um, they say that nicotine's good for focus and multitasking. So I also said that about anal. There it is. That's how I've created a billion dollar company. Through anal? Yeah. You would really worth a billion dollars? Or are you fluffing it up for us a little bit? The makeup brand? I was at yeah. 800 million. I'll lower it. I'll lower it. That sucks. I thought it was a billion. I'll be modest. Not a yeah. billionaire. Just a low millionaire at eight. What What was your thought process when you decided I'm not making I'm not making enough money. I'm not doing. I'm no, not as I'll, famous as I want to be. Okay. I'm not as famous as I want to be. I'm gonna go and take this leap of faith and do cosmetics. You, yeah. You've already said you're a confident individual, but there's ever a time you're like yeah. questioning. I Am I able to I do this? I stopped being confident with the music, so I was like, wow, I really got to do something that makes me happy. Yeah. So I was like, I love makeup. This is what I've always been good at. I used to do makeup on celebrities and musicians and all these things so I, but i'm like i want to create a line and be like the future of beauty mm-hmm. so i started this brand and then i saw what was happening on social media and youtube was really big back then 2015 16 17 18, 19, all that yeah so i hopped on that train and became the biggest beauty youtuber i was like let me just try this and yeah. i saw what the other people were doing and they're all so fucking boring and they're all liars and i'm like what the hell so i started youtube now we're billions of views later and i just quit eight years later no way. Three months ago, I quit. Yeah. Why'd you quit? Burnt out. You don't seem like a person that gets burnt out easily. For as many I've orgies, done it you, all. For as many orgies, yeah, that yeah. you've done, you feel like a lot of massages after. Lot, yeah. yeah. You feel you seem like a worker. I love working. Yeah. Twenty four seven. Yeah. Yeah. And so you just you're over the YouTube game. Burnt it's out. done. I've done it all. I showed I showed every aspect of my life. So do you feel I fulfilled? Want more privacy. Do you feel fulfilled from a, a fame standpoint? Yes. You do. Yeah. Is it everything you thought it would be? And what's that, fame? Yeah, because I think when we're all kids, I would sit there when I was five, 10 years old, think I'm going to be a pro baseball player. I'm going to be a yeah. famous actor or something like that. And then you you see the internet and you think that all these things that these people have are fulfilling yeah. and they're not that fulfilling. Mm-hmm. But no one wants to hear that when they're struggling. Yeah. I think uh, <laughs> I think Jim Carrey <laughs> said... I don't want to sound like an asshole. No. But like when, when, when you buy everything you've ever wanted, it doesn't actually fulfill you. Yeah. Like it's fun, obviously. It's fucking you, awesome. You're like a cosmetic Dan Bolzerian. Yes. Um, <laughs> less steroids, less steroids. Yeah. Less STDs. Got but zero. There is, Jim Carrey has a line where he says that, uh, he wishes everybody can, can become successful and famous to realize that's not what really matters. Yeah. So you do all this shit. You're an extremely successful human being. You have an literally have an autobiography coming about yourself. You're a stud. Thank you. Where do you find your fulfillment? Ooh. So during the pandemic, I wasn't being fulfilled anymore. I had done everything I ever wanted to do. And I really wanted land and to be around animals. And I really wanted to be a rancher. I know it sounds so out of pocket, but I love challenges. I feel like nothing's out of pocket at this point. Never. So I've I've already done so much. What was next? So I bought a lot of land and I bought a few animals. And then I saw the vision and just became obsessed with ranching. And then I was like, well, how do we make money? Because I can't just sit around and enjoy anything, sadly. Mm -hmm. It's my problem. And yak meat is such a niche market. and It's so healthy. I was like, I'm going to make yak meat. So How did you find out it's such a healthy googling and meeting yak ranchers and like where did where are the yak ranchers wyoming at? colorado yeah oh, for real yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were coming in there on their turf whole, oh yeah some of them are mad i bet dude they're there's like 45 living. people that live in wyoming they're like you so pissed off mad. half of them at least i know they hate me do you get do you get looks when you're walking down the street you go into your uh, the a town lot of people just want photos or pick you know they know who you are yeah, and they're really cool people in wyoming are really sweet like if your car breaks down, there'll be 10 people to help you. Or if you're in LA, they're like, ha, ah, die. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Literally. Scary. It's a lawless place. Care. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever go back to LA? No, I was there yesterday. I felt nothing. Mm. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. That is a fair my enough statement. there though. Shout out to all my amazing employees. I have yeah. 100 employees that ship makeup all day and help me run my business and make things come to life. If you're done with YouTube and all that. TikTok and, and Instagram are, are the, the new thing. The new thing. I mean, TikTok is obviously the future. 
I it already is. Talk. Yeah. See, I tried that game, and you got to evolve. But you don't have to. You play sports for a living. No, not for long. I'm old now. Stop. I am. For my for my profession, I am a old person. Is he? Oh. I'm washed. Wow. It's How are your over. joints? All right. I had ACL surgery 17 weeks ago, yesterday. Wow. My second one in three years. Turned my head to the left too fast. It hurts a little bit. I got Oof. this finger. This little boy right there is still broken. Oh, this thumb. That. Yeah. That's busted. Huh. But those are just cool war stories I get to tell now. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hopefully the concussions don't like take me out. And what but you have a very successful podcast. So what's after sports? I don't know. That's a great question. I think uh the reason why part of the reason why I asked you the question of fulfillment is I'm looking for the same thing as well. Oh. Married, I have two kids. That part of my life is extremely fulfilled. But yeah. and this is amazing. I wish Will could be here because I think you'd really enjoy Will. Where is he? He is in Tucson, Arizona, getting his passport. We're going to Cabo on Wednesday. Oh, on Wednesday. Yeah, you coming? I can. Yeah. There's an extra room. Yeah. Well, what's, I was going to give it to you guys, but now that... What's the Jeff purpose of the trip? Hang out, relax. Hmm. Have you been to Cabo? Yeah, of course. You said guess we're booked? Yeah, I guess we're going. Um, well, I'm friends with the cartel, so if you need anything, just text me. I will absolutely text yeah. you. Cool. I will absolutely text you on that. <clears throat> but that's... that's I, I, I do wonder, like, this what... Wednesday? See, I would. I, we're actually crazy where we would go because we can. But we'll be not, there. Not serious. We will be there the fifteenth to the nineteenth. Once Will gets his dick sucked like that, he's never coming home. I don't know, dude. You know, I know. <laughs> you won't come home. I know. Home. I can see it in his eyes. Only Will, dude. There, there was a plan why God didn't want him here today. <laughs> God saved him. He, yeah. Yeah. Man. It, it, <laughs> can only imagine how he would have handled yeah. that situation. Yeah. Yeah, you guys should come. Yeah, we'll, we'll be on Will's lap right now. I feel like. You think so? Yeah. He's he gonna have a smoke too. You have making me s'more. Have you seen Will? Not in person. Just have you seen photos of him? Yeah. Have you seen photos of him before his teeth? No. Have you seen photos of me before my teeth? That no. Was like a fucking monster. You have your teeth done? Come on. I'm getting my teeth done in a couple. Yeah, those are fantastic. Yeah. But mine are like the best. They're not blocky or weird looking. Yeah, did They're you ever very... get worried about getting too white though? They don't look too white. I'm saying that that's like my fear because I'm getting my teeth done in a few weeks. Oh, are you really? Yeah, I'm really excited. Oh, who's getting it? Who's doing it? I mean, some I'm... guy in Nashville, Tennessee. Do you have somebody for me that I should do instead? Yes, and they're in Atlanta and they're way better. No offense to your shitty dentist. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, he's from Bonterre, Missouri. Yeah, she give give the boy his flowers, bro. Everyone on the I am a killer on Netflix is from Missouri. It makes sense. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I it makes sense. We're going. We will be I in Cabo. My teeth, no, my teeth are bad. What are you? What are you actually doing there, though? The girl, wife's coming. Yeah, my um, Tanner's coming. My sociopathic friend. He actually uh, kind of lives in Cabo right now. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother-in-law's coming. He looks at me in the eyes. It's like he wants to eat me, like tear me apart. I think he's maybe interested. Like, very Dahmer. This is that's his teeth now. Yeah, it's a much. It's an upgrade like you've never seen before, huh? It's weird. Like went from a three to a seven. You think he's just a seven? Yeah. Kids got ass, though. See, I like ass on a straight guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a must. Kids got ass. Uh-huh. But yeah, Tanner's going. Quinn's going. My wife's going. And Will's wife is going. Who's watching the kids? Uh, my nanny's watching the kids. You know. I'm so privileged. All right. What's that? So privileged. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, I have two people watching my eight dogs right now. <laughs> you have eight dogs? Yeah. And I have 300 yaks. Yeah, the yaks, I feel like you just let them out there. You graze, you make a check them every yeah. once in a while. But eight dogs sounds like such a ridiculous they're responsibility. Little, they're Pomeranians. They're awesome. They're all a unit. They're a team. I'm a big chihuahua guy. Yeah. Mm. You don't like chihuahuas? Mm. Dude, I think they're awesome. Get matching hoodies and shit. Mm. You, you don't think that <laughs> shit's But Pomeranians dope? are like yaks. They're really diva and they have big hair and they look luxurious. Yeah, I don't like Pomeranians. Yeah. I feel like. Asshole. No. Well, okay. It wasn't all going to be sunshines and rainbows okay. with us. <laughs> So what's going to happen, um, you're, are you still, you said I'm done with YouTube. Yeah. So with, with cosmetics, where are you going with that now? What is the next thing for your brand? So the, so the pandemic kind of f fucked up the beauty industry and now it's finally coming back. Well, how did it fuck up the beauty industry though? Because you can that still great, ship. <laughs> you did well. No, like as far as like people were all stuck indoors and they weren't going out, they weren't going anywhere. Everyone was wearing masks. Yeah, so they don't they wear as much wearing makeup. Lipstick. They weren't going out every night. They weren't doing get readies. Um, and skincare skyrocketed and self-care. So I think everyone looked in the mirror and was like, oh wow, I look like shit. Or maybe mm. I should care about myself a little right. more. So makeup sales really slumped. We did really great, I think, because my brand's innovative. Our formulas are amazing. And I'm just fucking crazy. So, <laughs> um, but the future is just expanding this brand. We're nine years this year in November. 
It's a long time. That is a, that is a long time. by quick. Do you um, take a focus in your brand to make sure it's like more of the holistic side or beauty is the number one thing? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like you see, um, like if you take medicine, for instance, people yeah. are now go walking away from the, the standard doctors, even from vaccines with kids yep. and not giving them all those complex things are going more holistically. With Does the vaccine make you shake too? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god! I'm saying no, with, like my makeup brand is like vegan and la la la, but I'm I don't dive into the crazy everything. You don't, yeah. I'm outlandish. I can't have crazy, boring like packaging and recyclable packaging is great. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not for you but though. You I was more do, talking about like the the what's in the stuff. Oh no, everything's good and it's it's very it's very clean. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I might okay. need to get my hand on some of that stuff. No. Man. Yeah, we don't test on animals. We test on. Married guys, really. That's what some of the packaging says. I'll have to be your next You don't torture client. bunnies, you torture men. I will be next. Yeah. We did talk about doing something like that. I think it'd be very funny. Yeah. Um, Can you guys imagine him in a full face of makeup? I think I would look fantastic. You have really good skin, yeah. so that's a good start. Thank you. I base, actually, the base is good. I've been doing uh, a lot of face stuff, so I thank you for noticing. Is your wife helping you? Yes. Okay, I would I'm not have ever known. her my kit. Please do. Yeah, she doesn't. Really like I, I told you before, because a lot of brands are shit sucks, and it's just some dumb celebrity. Sounds like your shit's the best, crap. and no other brand is even worth it. He gets it. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Kardashians. Yep. They also do makeup and all all that stuff. They sure do. Did they do it before you or after you? Oh, that's a. Uh, mm, both. Because there's so many different ages now. They yeah. Have a fucking harem over there. Was, was there you said you guys are friends is, was there a level of like yeah is there a competitive or you're still friends yeah, about it because i had the, i have a huge brand but i also review makeup for a living and people really trust me mm -hmm. so when i was reviewing the brand i think i definitely tarnished and fucked up a lot of people's sales absolutely yeah yeah because if you say it's bad it's bad if they're gonna they're gonna believe you yes you have 60 million subscribers on youtube or whatever it is That's crazy yeah it's fucking wild yeah love or love and hate love or hate mm -hmm. so do you are you guys cool with that whole situation or is it kind of like a yeah. go? Well, when we've all seen each other, it's, it's normal now. Mm -hmm. But I felt, but imagine though you wake up, this is, I guess, similar to what's happening recently. And Kim's just sees a rumor that her husband's fucking me. Like that's probably annoying. That's probably gotta be tough for her. Karen kind of made a joke about it. Which is the best like, way to handle shit. Why would you lash out when you know your man's not? Unless Clearly, he is. He's been on a few trips and went baking. So. But you said you would never, you couldn't even floss with that. With who? Oh, I was talking about Henry. Oh, Henry. Yeah. Oh, Hennis. It always comes back to Henry. Dude, yeah. I feel so bad, Henry. I apologize. There's a few other ones I felt really bad for. Sorry, Cole. Um, oh, no. Look Cole. Cole. Find out who Cole is. I... Cole who? Is that the dude that's a tight end? For the Bears? I thought that was him. Really? Yeah. Maybe it is. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not? I'm just kidding, Cole. It's not Can you. Give me a letter. Oh, stop. Come on, dude. The world's going to explode. I, that's all I want. I'm just kidding. Oh, poor Cole. I was going to reach out to him and say sorry, but then what if he actually wants to hang out? Then that's a dub for you and if you're interested. Mm. What does he look like? Can we pull him up? Yeah, is he? Mm. We'll see about that. Yeah, I saw Buddy's tummy when you, when, you, uh, when you posted that photo. I was like, Buddy was jacked up, whoever you were with in Wyoming. And he said he knew me. Mm-hmm. That makes it all so much more interesting. He's we'll, like, we'll tell him in Cabo. Uh, yeah, yeah, Cabo, fifteenth to the nineteenth. Have you been to Cabo? You've obviously been to Cabo. You're a world traveler. This is not the greatest the place. Mansion next door. Are you guys available for me to rent? <laughs> so, right there, dude. Got oh. some good beefy arms. Yeah, he's pretty hot. Actually, he looks like an all-American boy. Is this one single or no? He's very low key. So. Perfect, dude. Oh. He's low key. Really? Uh, hmm. Who says that? <laughs> Fucking Google. Google. Says I'm six one and I'm six foot. So someone's lying on. How tall are you? Just six foot. Just six foot. Yeah. That was a a, a and part of the conversation. I, just, I don't know why I'm not attracted to short people. Really? Yeah. Ma'am, I feel like I need to get. Uh, I gotta think of more stuff because this is awesome. But I also don't know what I'm not asking. <sighs> Go ahead, Jackie. I'm going to repeat the question. This is from our good friend Jordan Smith back home. Hey, and Jordan. to ask Jeffrey if Michaela used fake eyelashes in her L'Oreal telescopic lift TikTok, hashtag mascaragate. So for all of 
the men who have no idea what I just said. Can you set the scene and explain? Yeah. Please explain so that. Just like I have no idea. Like team player drama or team dramas in yes. the beauty world. There's personality dramas. And someone allegedly recently did a review. Uh, it was a paid sponsorship. And it mm. said paid sponsorship. Really tiny. We can barely see it. And these girls are getting like $250,000 per post from these brands, if not more. I would do that. Uh, yeah, but will you? Would you? If your audience trusts you, would you lie to them, ruin your integrity, and just do it for the cash? No, yeah, I was just thinking about. Yeah, maybe. I would. Well, it depends what I'm lying about. I wouldn't. There's nothing I can lie about that would ruin the integrity of who I am. Really, kind of obvious. She still hasn't addressed it, so I say allegedly because there really is no final answer. Mm -hmm. I've asked for an answer. I've been put on red. Really, which kind of gives us the answer we have. And what's her name, Mackenzie? Michaela? <laughs> Michaela's great. I just think she lied in her ad. So it turned into this really big thing. And then I came out of the woodwork and said, hi, you're, you know, I, you're full of shit. Do you know this person? Yes. I'm the queen of reviewing. And I felt there was some lies happening, you know? So I don't think these people should take a check because they already get so many opportunities, so many free makeup trips and brands. All, there's so many things they get and they could do paid things in an organic way and not lie. They should just pay you. It seems like you'll give the straight answer well, every single time. this is crazy. The, ma the mascara was actually great and she didn't need to lie. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't understand it. People want to look better. Mm. What's your worst product you sell? My worst? Yeah, what's the stuff that's not oh. good? I can say we're talking about being honest. What's, what if your stuff sucks? None of you, it, honestly. No, come I on. I swear. I swear my dead There's got to be one thing you just don't love. We have, we have a, a, a gear that I'm not a huge fan of. We shouldn't have made it. I'm not going to say. <laughs> Boys, wow. not, there's some gear that I just wouldn't wear. Huh. I'm just saying. But I'm wow. not the one. It's not for us. It's for the people. We're for the boys. More ways than one now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's nothing that you think I, isn't. I'm so proud of my brand and all my formulas. I'm, I can't think of anything where I'm like, ugh. Because I wouldn't have. I only put out things I want to do. And I mm. can afford to make it exactly how I want. Which I'm grateful for. The... Uh, have you guys looked up the Twitter questions? Please look up the Twitter questions. We interrupt this episode to tell you about FitBod. Obviously, we're all starting the new year, getting Jack 2023 with the best intentions when it comes to our fitness routine. If I had my shirt off, you could tell that I've been on my game. And FitBod is a big reason for that. The FitBod app creates a workout program that's personalized to your goals, fitness level, and available equipment. It learns from your previous workouts and adapts as you improve. Start making progress towards your fitness goals today with 25% off a FitBod subscription. Just pick a fitness goal, select your equipment, and FitBod will create a custom workout for you. Your program also changes based on your personal progress for maximized results, and a full year of FitBod is less than the cost of a single session with a personal trainer. Jack put us through a FitBod workout in AZ, Immediately, we were all chiseled. So you want to get chiseled and you want to keep up your fitness habit with a personalized workout program from FitBod? You can do that. And you get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at fitbod.me slash bussin. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash bussin. Back to the episode. Oh, I think my first product, I had no idea it would ever turn that big. It was a liquid lipstick. There's only a few on the market at the time, which is a product that's liquid. It goes on and then it doesn't move. So you can eat pizza, you can give head, you can talk for hours mm -hmm. and the formula stays put. So my formula went really viral. It was the, it's the best one on the market. Still. Yeah. To this day. Yeah. That was a great question, JP. That was a fantastic yeah. question. And so the, the liquid lipstick made me wealthy. I will say it's it catapulted the brand. I love that. Yeah. Um, before we get into those questions, Mitch did bring up something about you being involved with the Illuminati. What about it? I've heard you're, or heard, where I heard you're involved. Are you? Absolutely not. I'm not near famous enough to do that. You don't have to be famous. How do I get in? Well, turn the cameras off. <laughs> Cut that, like, make it go black. <laughs> make it go black for a second and then dun, bring dun, it back. Dun, dun, dun. Is, you, is the Illuminati... gang signs. <laughs> is the Illuminati, is the Illuminati real? Yes. Are there any other secret societies other than Illuminati that maybe don't get as much press? Yeah, but they're evil and I don't fuck with them. Okay, so Illuminati is not evil. They don't do like blood 
<sighs> sacrifices. See, the problem is when there's people in control of anything, they get greedy, egos, so they ruin things and they make it evil. Mm -hmm. Care to elaborate? No. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. And is the Illuminati um, like celebrity based or are there politicians also involved money with that? Based. It's just money based. Mm -hmm. And then the celebrities are used as a vessel. Okay. Yeah. All right. How much a money? Vessel. How much money does someone have to make to be in? Or what? Or what you're willing to do to not be broke anymore? What does that mean? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. You speak in riddles. Like yeah. you give me just enough where I'm like I don't know. You have to so I don't get my plane bombed or killed later. You know. It's your fear for your life when you're speaking right now. And it kind of turns me on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love living on the edge. Like, you never know if you're going to get JFK'd. That is, if you're, have you ever worried about that? Has yeah. there ever been a time you're like, fuck, someone might besides uh, that wife? Mm hmm Yeah? She's not really going to do shit. Has there ever been a time <laughs> that you care to comment on that you were worried that people were actually going to try and kill you? Um, ooh. Was there ever a time? Mm, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I tested the waters recently to see if anyone would come after me. And how'd you test the waters? Just by saying a few things. What'd you say? Because I left LA and I broke ties with a lot of people and mm. I stopped fucking with they were a lot also of Illuminati. stuff. Yeah. So I'm still here. Mm -hmm. For now. For now. Yeah. What if I get killed on this trip? You get the last interview. You're welcome. <sighs> Thank you so much. Yeah. That You're would welcome. be... Hey, <laughs> numbies for the boys. Numbies. So We're actually the ones contracted to kill you and we just lured you into this podcast. <sighs> Let's go. This is it. How do you want to go out? How do you want to die? Oh, full firing squad while I'm nutting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, do you have something covering your eyes? Cigarette in the mouth or no? Uh, I don't know. Teabagged. There's nothing like being teabagged on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right before I turn on the game. The big game. Yeah. The one your boy's playing in mm -hmm. before the playoffs happen because he's not going to make the playoffs. No, his team's fucking dumb. His team's bad. No, they're great. What was the record this year? Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't. I can't. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not here to, I'm not here to expose a fellow player. <laughs> you say what? What? I said his name. You weren't listening. Oh, God damn. Well, we got it. Run it back, boys. Run it back. What questions who's, do we have? Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Philadelphia Eagles. Oh. Yeah. Who do you think's going to win the Super Bowl? I don't know. I really don't know. I was surprised those teams were the last two. Why? Mm. Kansas City, you can't ever you can't ever bet against, and the Philadelphia Eagles are possibly the best, I most well put Super Bowl team. In Nineteen, and the the Chiefs were there. Say it again. The Super Bowl was in Miami. What year? A few years ago, I went to that. That one. was three years ago. That was Chiefs won. I was there. Yeah, it was fun. That was cool. The Chiefs won. Mm -hmm. So you think the Chiefs are going to win? Yeah. But a lot of my employees from my brand love the Eagles, so they're... Why do they love the Eagles? Because they're from a lot of them from Philly for some reason. and they're Terrifying fan base. I know. It's they're a terrifying vicious. place. What questions do we have for Mr. Jeffree Star? Um, one was, who is your dream... Who is your dream hookup? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I can't believe I didn't think of that question. Huh, I already had it. Wyoming? Yeah. They have several Grammys, and they're in the hip-hop category. And they will massacre me if I say their name. Because they're also the Illuminati. It's Jay-Z. No. <laughs> uh-uh. It's not Jay-Z. Do you know Jay-Z? No. No. Mm -mm. You're not in the Illuminati then. He's not in. I don't know what's going on over there. Hip-hop's weird. They're all weird. Why do you say that? They're all freaks. They're all into everything. And there's just a lot of weird stuff going on over there. We should say more. NFL is a lot more safer. <laughs> I feel like the NFL being safer, like, in, in what way is the NFL safer? There's less games and trickery and weird shit. But what trickery are we talking about? Is it sexual trickery? No, just like like the hip hop community, like the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just different. It's a, it's a way different game. Yeah. And then the NFL is not as much Sports that game. It's more fun. They're more yeah. simplified. Yeah. Or it's, it's an objective, like, goal sport. Yes. Okay. What else we got? <laughs> oh. Go okay. ahead, Mitch. This is coming from Just Mitch's girlfriend. Where you are? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's okay with anything that happens. Say we're making an OF. Yes or 
How come you guys cool. decided to get camels on the ranch? Isn't that crazy to have camels? That's outstanding. I've always wanted one. I went to Egypt before. I've traveled the whole world. Mm-hmm. And I think camels are so cool. They're really smart, smarter than horses. And I'm like, what cool, weird shit can I get out here? Everyone has horses and cows and longhorns. Yeah. And I'm like, which is great. And there are no <laughs> camels. Tasty. Yeah. No, but I have the two humped camels. So they're called Bactrian camels. Bactrian yeah. camels. Two humps. And it's all fat and energy stored in there. It's mm-hmm. not water. <laughs> That's what I, I was actually, I would have There's thought no there was water. There's no coconut juice or water in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're just really cool. They're an investment. They're really pricey and mm-hmm. they're very exotic. How do they handle themselves in the wintertime? Great. Yeah? They're out there No right problem. Now. It's 25 degrees out today. Just ripping around. Yeah. How often do you travel? Like how often are you away from your ranch? Um, lately, not a lot. But yeah. it's New Year and I love traveling. So we're back on the horse. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, going, <laughs> going back to when you got canceled 10 times. Yeah. Why were you canceled? For old dumb shit I said. Yeah. Same thing. And I think it was when the pandemic was like at its highest and everyone was when everybody really was bored and like, we're going to come for blood and rehash everything again. Right. And it's like, oh my God. People who were dead were getting canceled. Yeah. It was so bizarre. Yeah, poor Elvis. Oh my God. Wait for him, I think they came for Sinatra for a little bit. Elvis tattooed on my chest. Really? Yeah. I had Sinatra tattooed on my hand. There you go. There you go. Did you like the movie? Yes. I thought it was fantastic. Great. Yeah. That director does an amazing job. Killed it. Yeah, absolutely. Lisa Peace, Lisa Marie. Would you ever want to do acting? Yeah, I'm really good at it. Yeah, so, so why don't you do it? We're slowly talking. So we'll Who's see. we? Do you see what I'm talking about when you say you're talking riddles? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> no, so I have been branching out to certain things mm. to ask questions like what TV shows, you know, because there's always casting calls and things. And I thought acting like a whole different role, like imagine me on like Sons of Anarchy. And I'm like a messed out biker gang. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want to do something so left field and not look pretty. That would be outstanding. Yeah. So you're talking to people brain. that I'm not allowed to know and you're going to yeah. get that done. Do, do we have the same agent? I don't know. I'm with, who are you with? Who are you with? CA. <laughs> so we'll see. Bam. I love it. They're outstanding. Why not WME? Mm. Not for you. Don't like the new management. Cunts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rodeo Drive. I want to do. I want to do acting. I think it'd be really fun. Yeah, something really left. Field. What would be a dream role or an actor or an actress you'd want to work with? Mm. Leo. Oh God, Leo. Yeah. No. He's an Illuminati. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> they spit him out. <laughs> oh, that's tough. Um, tough for Leo. I don't like him. He likes little girls. But I. <laughs> Mm-mm. That's not for you. In your 50s, dating a 19 year old, that's not okay. It's disgusting. Well, technically, it is okay because 18, 17 would not be okay. I can't. But 18 is okay. Not mentally. I'm a big Leo fan. I think his movies are great. I just think he needs to date a little older and find happiness. Yeah. I think there was a. Oh, I'm not going to go into the rumors because I don't know Leo. Uh-uh. But See, the helicopter said, uh uh-uh. uh. No, that's Leo. not, that is not going to happen. Probably TMZ right now. So, who would be, who would be somebody you'd want to work with? Ooh. I like all these new, like, big shows like Euphoria and stuff like that with these mm. new, like, the up-and-comers, like the Austin kid. I love Who's him. Who's the Austin kid? What's his character? Isn't it Austin his character? Oh, God. Yeah. The, the shaped head. Oh, uh, Yes. Yes. From, from that 70s show? No! That's a great, that's, I fucking love yeah. that show. That's a Fez I know. Yes. Yeah. Agnes really McCloud. Cool. Like, I like these new people. Not, I mean, or you can be like, like Johnny Depp. I have Edward Scissorhands tattooed on me. That's my favorite movie. That's like, it, Johnny you know? Depp is outstanding. Yeah, Willy Wonka. Are you kidding Were you me? on his side during the trials? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it seems like everybody was. Come on. Amber Herb seems like she really just like... Awful. Showed herself the door. Awful. She really that bad? Do you know her? No. Well, I'll say she's awful too. Then you're yes. awful, Amber. Just from, what I, just from what I've seen. Who are... So Jack just Ooh. asked, who are some celebrities you met that you had high expectations for that let you down and vice versa, correct? That's a good one. That is good. That's why I had a crew around me. I never let people let me down as far as that. Because, you know, everyone always says, don't meet your heroes. Mm-hmm. So I met like Madonna and Britney Spears and all these people. And I never like expect them to be great. So when they are, I think it's awesome. Because I think there's so many egos and crazy personalities out there. Yeah. So I think meeting those like pop icons or even Lady Gaga for them to acknowledge me or even reach out like, hey, thanks for reviewing my product. Like you're fucking awesome. Like that's cool. It means they're, I think they're still humbled. Yeah. So all the pop divas have been really cool. I really haven't had a bad experience. I know that's shocking. Mm -hmm. But I think all the people that 
if I've tried to meet them and they don't want to, they just tell their publicist, I don't want to meet that crazy bitch. And that's over. Yeah. So I, I really like that more than a fake hug. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. You don't like me, that's all good. I don't think I've ever had a bad encounter with anybody. I probably haven't met half the people you have, but yeah, there's I don't some... spend that time in LA like that. Why, you should. No, you just said it's a hellhole. Why would I go there now? Money. Everything. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of business to do there. That's yeah, I think there's that. a there's a uh, time and a place to go there, but to yeah. plant your flag in the ground and be there. If you're not already there, yeah, no. Yeah, not, that, not that does not need to happen. What do you think? Oh, so I thought you were going to ask a question. Um, is there anything you... Uh, like... JP asked, is there anything you miss about life pre-fame and all this? I'm just thinking about how broke and miserable I was. Fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, being... Having money is... I like being disruptive and I don't like peace and quiet. So like, yeah. It's an outstanding question. I don't think I miss anything. That's a great question. What, is there ever a time that you're like just going to be done with everything and walk away? I haven't hit that those feelings yet. Never. Mm -mm. But you walked away from YouTube. Dinosaur. Twenty years in, in on the internet. That's a long time. That is a long time. You're like me in the NFL. I still love it. Yeah, but, but you, you but you got away from actually, YouTube though. Like, yeah. does YouTube ever make a comeback for you? I don't know. Right now, no. But a lot of the old YouTubers are trying to come back. Yeah. The viewership's just not there, and the beauty space is ruined. So, <sighs> podcasts are great for YouTube. Beauty, deceased. Do you have a podcast? No, but Why I, don't you do one? I've been offered. Yeah, you should absolutely do one. I don't know the right fit. Hi, Barstool. I think Barstool would be, Barstool would be great for you. I want to do like a Dr. Drew like sex show. But you, yeah, I don't even know who that is. Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Someone has to know what, what Love Line is. Brother, I'm, I'm tapped out He's in that market. Out. <laughs> so if you're uh, on, from, on social media, you go into your comments and it's just yeah. crazy. It's, a, it's completely hectic. On one side, it's extreme hatred. The other yep. side, it's, it's uh, loving and a massive support. And we talked about it earlier, how you see 10 good comments and one bad comment. Yep. How do you handle the hate side? For me personally, I was chuckling because I think I've experienced too much online trauma mm -hmm. where I just don't care. You're calloused over it. Dead inside. It does not affect you at all anymore. <laughs> no, I've just heard everything across the board for so long. Mm -hmm. I'm like waiting for some new insults. But no, I don't take it personal because I've never scrolled on any app and left someone a negative comment. Mm -hmm. Don't understand it. I just don't have that personality. If it's I don't punching up. Yeah, but if you don't care about someone or you don't like them, I guess it's just so easy to just keep going. Mm -hmm. Just stop and like, you know, everyone says waste time. I know writing something takes 10 seconds, but it's just such wasted energy. Yeah. You know, so I don't you. really care. I've heard it all. It's outstanding. It's a reflection on them and their misery. And they're just lashing out at me because I'm successful and getting banged. Bangbus.com. <laughs> <laughs> free ad yeah. for bang bus bang bros um, unless we got anything else from the boys I think this has been an extremely unique and awesome podcast I am absolutely rooting for you you have the best cosmetics in the business hell yeah thank you <laughs> we love you and we appreciate you so much coming on seriously thank this you. is awesome I appreciate it thank you hell yeah subscribe please rate five stars okay <laughs>